All right, hello, welcome to Adventures and Lollygagging. We are back tonight playing one of my favorite games that I've ever played. Uh, it's called Electric Bastion Land. Uh, I even have my beautiful physical copy here, and we are uh, we are we are going to do our our Oddmas special. Uh, I think we're going to make this an annual thing for however we did it once last year. We did Twas the Night Before Oddmas, uh, and then tonight we are doing what did I call it? Mary Oddmas 2 Electric Bastion Land Boogaloo. Uh, and uh, and then I'm very proud of the tagline. And I've been telling them over and over again on the proud of this tagline. And it says, the only thing colder than winter is revenge. Right? This is good, guys. Right? Guys, yep. that's good. Yep. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so good. It's okay. okay. So. All right. Oh, no, okay. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's pretty great. Uh, but if yeah, if you've tuned in expecting to see uh, Wrath and Glory, I am sorry. Uh, that'll be back in a couple weeks. Uh, but as you can see, we are down two of the people from that group. So we're going to rip this one shot. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, if you've uh, never seen electric or never seen us play Electric Bash Land before, it gets a little weird. It gets a little crazy. Uh, and it's uh, we have plenty of uh, one shots and little short adventures and stuff uh, over on the the uh, Adventures and Lollygagging Gagging YouTube channel. And there's uh, playing stuff over there. So, yeah, um, very simple game, D20 game, uh, super light, super fast. And we are specifically using a supplement uh, called the 12, uh, what's it called? The 12 Failed Careers of Oddmas. Oddmas being sort of like the Christmas like equivalent. Uh, and uh, we'll introduce characters in game as we go. And you can already see on the overlay, if you're watching this, uh, you can see what their failed careers are. Uh, which is a lot of fun. Uh, we've got some repeat characters uh, from last year's special, and we have some brand new characters as well. Uh, so uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. So without further ado, uh, what do y'all say we get started? Does that sound good? Yeah, uh, sounds good. I'm going to do a little setup here, then I'm going to throw it all to you, and you can describe your characters, what they look like, what they're thinking, all that kind of stuff as we... Uh, as we get started. So let's do, um, yeah, let's get a little start. Okay, here we go. Once more, for the second year in a row, an Oddmas blizzard has swept over the city of Bastion. You can see that there are skyscrapers of varying degrees of modernity covered and coated in ice and snow. It's basically the worst blizzard since last year, when tragedy struck the Shandor Tower, which some of you participated in that tragedy, uh, scattered reports have been coming around here and there uh, around Bastion Land. Uh, rumors of strange lights in the sky, the freezing of various canals crisscrossing the city, various disruptions to plumbing and electricity, which has been newly sort of wired around the uh, uh, the city itself. Now, the streets right now are absent of their, their usual bustle, uh, but they are not empty. Uh, we can see that there are seasonal workers and utility specialists that are trudging through chemically infused snow and ice that has essentially blanketed all the bureaus, boroughs. You can't even see any of the streets anymore. Street bohemians are burning coal in various tax documents for warmth. They're nestled beneath bridges or and alleyways underneath nooks. We can see one of the most common terrors of this time of year, orphan carolers stalking travelers from the shadows, ready to pounce, sing, and plunder. And another very common and vile group, mockery gangs are dressed in odd misfinery and are weaving about, laying traps for last minute shoppers, flashing first guile and then knives. And beneath it all, the underground, the machine underground rumbles. Not quite a quake, but disruptive enough to drop snow and icicles from various sills and eaves. As the winter winds swirl, we settle in on Dow Ripple's circle. Normally the height of haughtiness and pretension in the city, but tonight it is absent its usual players. The gilded lily, as we stare over towards it, is closed Though its front door sits strangely ajar and its odors are wafting outward. Next to it, Dr. Chronicle's timepieces also sit silent, unticking. And we see on the other side of a nearby alley, 
a vintner's night, shuttered, presumably unsecured, and next to it, seems like magic, bears a large and violent crack that seems to be slowly maneuvering across its display window. But the most interesting and lucrative site for treasure-bound failures like yourselves sits across the circle from these shops on the Northern Arc. Bastion's Archive of Art and Art-like Things. The archive is coated in this mysterious sheath of ice, and it's topped in this very, very tall building by a bright and flickering light that honestly hasn't been seen since last Oddmas Eve before the Shandor tragedy. Nonetheless, the archive, we can presume due to the weather, sits possibly unguarded, and all manner of luxury that your current debt holder, the Crushing House, would love to see you abscond with so that they might crush it for their various exorbitantly wealthy clients. So as we start to weave down in this blizzard on the edge of the circle near some of these shops across the circle from where this large monstrosity of an ice cube sits, we see a group of disparate people ready to make a living while others are warming themselves by fires. And so the first person we're going to focus on, let's see, we're going to do this randomly. We're going to focus on a man by the name of Dr. Bad. Jeremy, describe yourself. Dr. Bad is an MD of malicious intent. They called him naughty for wanting to pursue his dream, and he decided if that's what Father Odmus says, he doesn't give a damn about naughty or nice. If doing what he says to be an indentured servant is wrong, he doesn't want to be right. And by God, it's going to feel good to be bad. He is a large in stature, golden ring grappler. He doesn't give a damn about this cold. He's walking out there with his oiled uh, luchador chest and like a mockery of a doctor's outfit. Fantastic. Are are the sleeves like cut off too? You have the lab mm -hmm. coat, but their sleeves are cut off. Yes, okay. exactly. Excellent. Uh, okay. Uh, so you die of hypothermia. Uh, go mm -hmm. ahead and reroll mm -hmm. your character. Uh, Sweet. <laughs> standing next. Dr. Bad Dr. Jr. <laughs> Dr. Bad. <laughs> standing next to Dr. Bad, we see. Well, Stephen, tell us, what do we see and who are you? Ah, oh, oh, damn, I got to follow Jeremy's awesome introduction. Uh, yeah, I'm a Cray and I am a fancy poulterer. I am obsessed with birds. Um, I wear a hat. The it, It's like the shape of like a raccoon skin hat, but it's just feathers. Uh, and it's even got a tail of feathers. Um, and I'm wearing a down jacket. Uh, that one actually does have the synthetic material on it. Uh, you don't see the feathers, but there's a couple of them. You poke out, you pull them out every now and then. Um, I'm also carrying a rather large rocket launcher um, that is foot shaped. And the rockets are the toes. Uh, it's my missile toe. Oh, and I have a talking bird. Do you have a name for that talking bird? Do you have a name? Uh, yeah, it's a seagull. His name's Steven. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Steven Seagull. As we get a small little squawk from Steven the seagull, we pan over, and on the other side of Dr. Bad, well, Ashley, what do we see? On the other side of Dr. Bad is Mullen, and she is... She is a turtle devotee. She comes up to Dr. Bat around his shoulders about, and she is a turtle, but she's standing and she's flesh colored. Uh, and she's against the Christmas spirit. <laughs> Damn it, Jeff. She's against the Christmas spirit and she's wearing black gloves. And, but she is aggressively, she's eating candy canes and she's using her teeth to sharpen them into little shanks. <laughs> uh, as she's because she doesn't smoke, so she's trying to look very cool as she stands next to Dr. Bad because together they have murdered people and they will hopefully do the same this year as well. Okay, I like how uh, you get mad at me, but you're the one who described a flesh colored turtle. Uh, so so it's really a fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'd forgotten, I'd forgotten. <laughs> 
We see standing to the left of this flesh-colored turtle. Long, what do we see? I'm Noel. I'm a pretty short and stout human dressed in a toy soldier's clothing. So I've got the bright red jacket, nice blue slacks. And I've got a nice June apple tree, the real tree of Odd Miss. That we should praise it all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're like a religious fanatic for the tree. So. Yeah, because I'm, I'm an apprentice to a tree. And the, the Fantastic. The tree I rolled was the June apple tree. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, this isn't the first time that you've played like a... Like it reminds me of like the Mutant Year Zero game where you just sort of played a religious fanatic. And then finally, that means the last person we meet. Melissa, describe what we see and who we see. Uh, yeah, so you see this uh, kind of older woman who is just sort of like kind of a bit, kind of a frumpy kind of a vibe. Uh, she has also the vibe of kind of a like very tired kindergarten teacher. So like she has a color that she has chosen for her outfit. And so she's got like lots and lots of eye makeup that matches the shirt, that matches the bracelet, that matches the socks and everything just kind of goes together in that vibe. Uh, she is her pre her failed career was a goose, a layer. So she was charged with attempting to calm the least calm of birds. And now her service is over, which I kind of see as being like kind of like a kindergarten teacher, except that uh, the geese that wouldn't get in line. Um, I'll just say the picture in the book has the goose layer with an axe. So there's that. Very nice. So, we settle in on the five of you on the edge of this circle. Those shops I listed are here, possibly open, possibly closed, possibly uh, guarded, possibly not. Who knows? There's no real light that you can tell other than that bright light on top of that enormous archive on the other side of Dow Ripple Circle. And when I say enormous, I do mean I do mean this this museum, this archives is is a, a extremely large, multiple stories. And you can see that there's some some shadows and shapes of people milling about in the alleys. There might be the sound of something cracking or getting knocked over in a shop nearby. There's you get the sense that you're not alone. And, you know, with every kind of look down an alleyway, there's like a flicker maybe uh, of, a, of a fire inside of a, a trash can. Or you can see a shadow dart strangely underneath the eve of another store and you're you think you might have seen a group of mockeries move by or you might even hear the the very soft chorus of your orphan carolers somewhere you know you're not alone it's a dangerous time of night but you all are heavily in debt and there's few nights such as tonight where everyone's not really paying attention uh, where you can very easily abscond with all manner of riches not only that, some of you, Mullen, Dr. Bad, Cray, some of you, you're probably getting some slight flashbacks as you look across at that strange sheath of ice that is covering this archive, because it looks very much like what was covering the Shandor building last year when you all had such a peculiar experience. So I'll turn it over to you. What does everyone want to do at this point? So as we're walking down the road, you see that Dame, um, as long as we're kind of walking and there's some sort of a covering overhead, like she's fine. But as soon as if we're walking and we like cross the road, you just see her constantly just sort of like looking up and just like looking up and she like runs until she's like back under like covering again. And then she just kind of looks up and then like <sighs> takes a deep breath. So she's very distracted in the process of moving around just to make sure that she's always got something overhead. Okay. Uh, why are why are you doing that? Oh well, these stupid freaking geese—they're you never know when they're just like they're sometimes they're loud and you know where they are, and sometimes they're not loud, and some of them hold a grudge, and so you know if I'm walking around sometimes. And they might just like take my hat off my head or take some hair off my head. And so, uh, yeah, 
Oh, he's on the lookout. You did not just speak ill of the second best waterfowl. I, I know I didn't hear that. Listen, when you've dealt with them as long as I have, they are I the am most... literally a dealer of fowl. That's that's great. You did not spend your life trying to keep them in line. I can tell you that they are top of my list of pain in the ass birds. If we're into ranking things, apparently mm. top of the list. Most annoying. Am I right? It's quite true. I've had to wrestle one before. Now, Cray, you are an odd duck and I understand where you're coming from, but those things can bite you with a grip that rivals the Bastion Strangler. I once had to use a pry bar to get one off of my buttocks. Well, it, it's, <laughs> but it is a good thing that I am with you. And so she kind of pulls out of her, you know, kind of little pocket that she's got. But see, this is the secret weapon. This is it. And so she's got these like breadcrumbs. You I'm expecting you him. to be like a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying we shove bread down our pants so they will nibble upon it instead of our succulent flesh? I'm I'm just saying if they eat it, it's nap time. Oh. Um, as we are walking, Mullen is leading the group towards that weird glassy uh mirage thing. Uh and Mullen is also looking for those horrible orphans that because mm. we were accosted by some previously last year. Sure. She's on a swivel for danger. You're looking around, Mullen. Uh, you know, you can hear them. Uh, you can hear, like, the faint sounds of them singing something. Uh, like, silent night, give me your wallet. And, like, over and over and over again. And it's, like, wafting around <laughs> on the on the wind. But you don't ever see them Never exactly. Me, bastards. But what you do see as, as, is it Dame or Dom? I'm sorry. Is it Dame or Dom? It's Dame. Melissa. I had a first name at one okay. time, but everybody just called me Dame, and so it's just my name now. Okay. So as as Dame is like like holding in her hand these like breadcrumbs, like out of nowhere, like whew, you guys just see this sort of two dudes in each in like this dirty, like heavy kind of trench coat. Trench coat. They're both kind of dragging what looks like uh, like a like the the leg of a like a wooden leg of a of a dining table behind them. They're like, uh, hey, you, you got any, you got anything to eat? Hey. Oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's odd, Miss Citizen, you know. It, oh, no, no, no. I, I give, our miss is, is watching. No, you Certainly nice, don't. You know? Dame a shove forward since she showed the breadcrumbs. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I, yeah. I, have, I have nothing. I, I would give it to you if I did. Come I on. just don't. They, they cut my hours at the meat and cheese factory. I ain't got enough money to, to buy to buy Odmus dinner for the family. Just a little bit. Just oh, a that little. That is such a sad story. Thank you. I, I can you make it happy? Dame, can you I, make it happy? I, I yeah, you can make me I, happy by telling me where this Father Odmus is. You said he's watching us. I want to be watching him. Tell yes, me where you if, if you see where Father Odmus is, you must tell me immediately. He, okay, people, he ain't real. He ain't, he ain't real. He is very to... real, and he deserves death. Uh, uh, I, you, so I have you know, I will be the one demanding oh. satisfaction now. Where is Father okay. Odmus? I don't know where Father Odmus is. I don't. I in a, in a storybook. I I I, I saw him and. Uh, and one at a department store with little kids on his knees the other day. And he Point was that department store out to me. Turn around. Show uh, me where it is. It's it, it's like on the other side of the city. It's like really fucking far away. Does he turn away. around? You definitely don't. And he turns around. Yeah. I'll basically wrap his head, do a DDT, and I'll <laughs> drive him down to the <laughs> concrete. <laughs> and the other guy who's standing next to him is like, fella, all he wanted was something to eat. What are you doing? Don't get me worked up about Father Odmus and then tell me it's all fake. Uh, okay, okay, it ain't fake, it ain't fake. It's totally real. Father Odmus is real. But if Father Odmus right. is Wheel real... Wheel him into existence. Well, you know what they say, though, about him? That he can see all. He can see everything you do. I hope he can see us. What? What? 
I totally understand it. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear you. you, you you're very intense. Everyone, can you stop <laughs> choking my friend? And Mullen's like doing like a weird thing with her shell as she gets more aggressive. Like her shell just comes up more. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, oh, my. <laughs> And he like, reaches out and he starts dragging his friend away. If Dr. Bad will let him go. I, I don't know where he is, fella. I don't know. But I'll tell you this. He saw what you did here. He saw what naughty fools y'all were. A curse on y'all. A curse. Father Almas is coming for you and everyone you love. Yeah. And he starts dragging them away across the, across the circle. Mullen, that's it. That's he just gave key. it to us. That he gave we us have the to, key. We need to be as naughty as possible to draw Father Artemis' gaze. <laughs> and and that's when Mullen aggressively yells, thank you, as she throws her candy canes at them. Like, she didn't really sharpen them very well. <laughs> and she gives them candy canes <laughs> after the effect. <laughs> <laughs> you, just hear, you just hear, oh, God, why are they so sharp? Uh, as you look back, and they're just they're sticking out of places. And <laughs> because I've been looking on them for the past half hour, sharpening them perfectly. <laughs> you probably have... Never mind. <laughs> so, you have scared away two seasonal workers who are begging for food. You have been cursed, and you remain now in the middle of, uh, of Dal Ripple Circle. Um, what's next for you guys? So we sure. were we were headed towards something. Yes, Mullen? We were not mm. we were headed right? We're headed to the museum. Yes. Yeah, towards the the ice. It's frozen exactly. over. Exactly. Exactly. We were last Christmas we dealt with this weird nonsense. There was a portal, giant evil Christmas tree. What is this Christmas you keep talking about, Ashley? Odd mystery, Thank pardon, you excuse me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> she doesn't respect Father Admiral enough to say his name. So she's <laughs> conjured up some fictional character to replace him. No, well, lead the way. Lead the way right. to the museum. Come on, you lot. And okay. she's going to, like, line everybody up behind. Like, okay, come on, everybody, everybody, get get, get in a straight line. Get in a straight Come on, come on, we're straight not, line. Straight we're line. not ducks in a row. Uh, I am a turtle. Thank you, okay? Then you can bring up at the end. Everybody in a straight line. All right. Okay. So, Noel, Do, go ahead, Craig. Does Steven need to be, like, in his own place in line, or does he take my place with me? Your partners walk side by side. But we're not. Oh, let him sit oh, on your shoulders a, like the electric chair. That's not a straight chair. line, then. If he's if he's right next to me, just hold hands, and you stay in he the line. He doesn't have any hands. He's got tiny little wings. He's a seagull. And she just gets exasperated and just turns around. Which and was my goal. Okay. <laughs> Noel, you lead the straight line ish of people uh, up these broad, wide, which you would imagine are very beautiful, like marble stairs, but are currently now coated in a very slick and icy uh, sheen to the point where it's kind of slippery. Uh, not to the point where as long as you all are moving, like without, you know, uh, like you're not running, you're, you're, you don't have to make any rolls or anything, but you're moving very carefully, slowly, one after the other. The ice doesn't crack beneath your feet. Um, the sort of the sounds of the carolers, the orphan carolers just fades back into the night. And pretty much every other sound does too with each additional step that you make. Eventually you stop at what looks to be some kind of uh, kind of open sort of patio with a series of kiosks here and there coated uh, in ice. Uh, you can imagine that these are probably just places to put up various broadsides and uh, advertisements about what gallery exhibits are going on, but all of them just look like these, uh, these not quite snowmen. They're just this singular uh, shoot of snow. And you can see that all around in this, uh, in this sort of patio area, there's these chunks and chunks of snow. And up ahead, Noel, you also notice that the entrance to the interior of the archives seems to be completely and utterly coated, coated over, coated, excuse me, uh, with ice. That's what you see when I arrive. 
how tall are these shoots of snow? Uh, I would say about six feet, give or take. I'd like to knock one over. Okay. So, Cray, go ahead and roll a strength save for me as you move on over and try to shoulder into one of these. Um, I'd like to ask someone else to knock one over. It's too late. You said what you said. Hey, I passed. Uh, I okay. needed a seven. I rolled a three. It's not going over too easily, but eventually, like you, you put your shoulder into it, and you see a big chunk of snow drop off from the top. You realize maybe about two feet of it falls, and some of it falls on you. And all you really see is that it w- it is like a kiosk that is anchored into the ground, uh, and it has just been coated almost like a column of snow. And you manage to knock probably the top two feet of snow off, and you can see the very top of the kiosk itself. Uh, but uh, there doesn't seem to be anything like moving or anything underneath here. Any power to the kiosk? Uh, it does not seem to be powered. Uh, it's more just a place to, like I was saying, to probably hang advertisements or gotcha. uh, broadsides, those types of things. Uh, but th- but to follow up on your question, you don't actually see any of the lamps. There are the entire staircase and then into the patio that is flanked by a series of lamps. Um electrical none of them are on all of them are dark the whole area is dark the only light you're getting is when you look up and you can see the pulsing of the light at the very top of this museum so do we need to break through more of the snow to be able to kind of enter uh so there's two different things going on cray was messing around with a kiosk noel noel is looking at a uh like the the entrance into the archives themselves, like we're like through these big ornate doors, it's just coated over with ice. So Dame would, I, I imagine she is an individual that has a very large purse that has anything you could ever possibly need in that purse. And so she That's would convenient. like to just start taking that purse and just like whacking at the ice and seeing if she can break the ice in the door. Sure, sure. Start smacking away at it. It's going to take a little time, so you start working at it. Uh, maybe you have a small, you know, file or some other pick in there, a little knife, pocket knife, that kind of thing, and you start hacking away at it as best you can. But it's going to take some time. Uh, what are the rest of you uh, doing? I like where Dame's head is at. Now, this kiosk, uh, what is it made of? Is it a fairly solid structure? Perhaps some metal chunks to it, or wood, or something Definitely. that perhaps a large person might pick it up and swing it as a larger instrument of destruction oh yes it very much looks like it's uh it's framed by iron um and then there's like these uh some sort of bulletin board like material something cushy for the to sort of pin things to but like the frame of it definitely appears mm-hmm. to be metal oh well that's perfect so clearly i know by the logic is a golden ring grappler that the best way to inflict maximum force is to lay it up against the ice run far, far away, get a running start, and then throw myself in a forward cannonball motion, Kevin Owens style, to hit it with a thunder slam. If you would like, Mullen could assist as springboard. A monkey flip. Turtle flip. A turtle toss. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, Dr. Bad, uh, as you are taking a running start then you are going to flip uh, with Mullen mm-hmm. and then throw the full force of your momentum into this kiosk to hopefully get it moving. Mm-hmm. And you're trying mm-hmm. to get it moving and so that it smashes into the entrance. Am I yeah. understanding that It's correctly? like the ridiculous thing when a wrestler puts a table up against somebody and somehow that's going to make it hit harder. Yeah. Roll a strength <laughs> save as you do this uh, and we'll see, okay. uh, we'll see how this, this works out for you. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, call it out because I'm not always looking. Oh, it's uh, 10 under 13. So maybe. Uh, okay. You feel a shudder of pain uh, rip through your uh, th- through your body as the kiosk was very much bolted into the ground. Uh, but nonetheless, <laughs> uh, apparently some sort of some sort of it's somehow uh, contracted uh, maybe, and you wrench it free, and it goes. First tumbling, almost like it's cartwheeling for a second, and then it flops. And because this is whole area is ice, it starts to skid, skid, skid. 
Uh, Dame, I would imagine you're, uh, you don't have to roll or anything, but you see suddenly behind you, there is a, uh, you know, six, you know, four foot, five foot long, three foot wide kiosk made of metal sliding across uh, the ice about to smash into you. You step out of the way and instead it crashes uh, into the, the front entrance of this, uh, of this museum. You can see that the ice fractures a bit, shards go this way and that. And you can also see that it manages to pierce all the way through to these ornate wooden doors. Uh, and that allows you of now to sort of pry the rest of the way open. You do, in fact, have a way inside. Oh, show off. I would have gotten there. I was I was working on it. I was I doing know, but it. think of the geese that might have assaulted you in the middle of that process. Oh, gosh, I'd, I'd, I'd forgotten for a second. Oh, let, let, let's get inside. Um, please be careful. There may be alarms. Do not just open this door. Oh, it's a little late for that. Door's already been opened. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. We I, I thought we just broke Remember, the glass. Remember, no. we want to be bad because Father Oddness is watching. Let him hear the alarms. You hear us, Father Oddness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do you guys push inside? Yeah. Oh, Mullen, you are the best. <laughs> All right, you guys move inside, and although you don't feel wind, uh, there is still an intense amount of cold. And not only that, but you can see that many of the surfaces, not all, but many other surfaces are still covered with ice and snow. It seems almost inexplicable to some degree. However, a few of you, Cray, Dr. Bad, and Mullen, all three of you know that, well, this is exactly what it was like with the Shandor Tower. Like, somehow, the outer weather managed to find its way inside. Uh, and here we are with no windows particularly open or anything like that, but you're seeing these gallery displays. There's definitely a reception desk area and there looks to be uh, places where you can kind of check your bags if you have them, a small little locker. And then you can see the very first exhibit seems to be right out in front of you. Now, it's very dark inside now uh, as you're no longer getting the residue of the, the blinking light at the very top uh, of the museum itself. Um, do any of you have light sources of any kind? Um, I have a light source that is very fleeting, and I can only use it four times. I don't I have can it. make it explode. Does Dame have anything in her purse? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm imagining... There, I remembering this like old school like like coin purse thing that on the other end of it was like a little light, <laughs> like a little like plastic thing, and so that, like that's the extent of the light that she has is just this little like push light. <laughs> like yes, see light. Okay, very very tiny uh, light, right? Okay. <laughs> yes, very tiny light. <laughs> Seagulls are known for having excellent night vision. Uh, so Stephen could be uh, guiding me through. And eating things. Has your seagull eaten a flashlight? So I need Cray <laughs> to make, and you can make a choice here, Cray, depending upon your strategy. Because Stephen, upon entering into this, uh, this museum, immediately gets very excited about something and tries to break free from you and fly off into the dark. Now, you can either A... Roll a deck save to try to grab him physically, or you can roll a charisma save to use your, you know, personality to convince him to stick with you. Uh, we have a very, very deep bond, and I think he would want me to join him in whatever excitement it was. So I will just politely remind him that I'm supposed to go with uh, using okay. charisma. Okay. Uh, six under talk. 16. Does Steven talk? Steven doesn't talk, right? It's not a talking seagull, is it? Yeah, he, he talks. He literally talks. He's a mouth foul. Uh, he talks like Steven Seagal. Oh, okay. Okay. God, I didn't practice the Steven Seagal accent. So you see, he just looks at you. His eyes are, his eyes are kind of tight. He, he's he got like his, his, his hair is slicked back. Like his, his, his feathers are slicked back and you can see a few of the them. The top are feathers are dyed black. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and he looks, he looks extremely out of shape. Uh, and he's got a little very pudgy. penciled in goatee, uh, and uh, he looks very out of shape. But he's like, eh, I smell something in there. 
You know, something. Something good. It smells real good. I want to eat it. I want to roll around in it. I want to feel it on my feathers. Sounds good to me. Let's go. So the two of you plunge into the darkness up ahead. And you realize, Cray, that you have essentially waded into what looks like a trash heap. Um, and Stephen is just extraordinarily Not the first time he's to Yeah, he's, he's extremely excited. Uh, and he's just rolling around in it. He's like, oh, yeah, this, oh, this is the greatest thing that happened to me in my life. Oh, this is so good. Uh, as he is just pecking away at various uh, heaps of trash. Cray, you also notice in the very, very limited light you have, you almost have none, I would say, if you're getting too far away from, from Dame. There are all sorts of heaps of trash. Uh, and some of them, there's some streaks of trash on the walls. There's, uh, strangely enough, there are these cords uh, that are on these small pedestals that seem to be kind of roping off certain sections of the heaps of trash, like they're actually surrounding some of the heaps of trash here and there. You can see that they are also creating a buffer between the wall where some uh, some some streaks of trash uh, have been uh, kind of rubbed up against these squares, like these these paintings almost on the wall. Um, and you start to realize that like, are is the trash the exhibit? Is is sort of what you're beginning to see, and that's when I'll say you notice that there is a small. Um, there is a small kind of stand pedestal with a the name of the exhibit. It's called uh, uh, it's Shaf on canvas or Shaf as canvas, and you can see like it's just like a this, this sort of uh, rumination on garbage as art. And that's what your 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 seagull seems to be um, rolling around in. Aim comes running taste. after like wait light, light source light source you need light. Oh, oh, what, what is in here? Oh, Steven Seagull, Seagull is a black belt. That means he can see in the dark. He can see. And he wanted to see this, this, it's, it's trash. It's all trash. Yeah. He would tell me if there was something dangerous. Oh, okay. I'm going to take my light and go d d down the hall. Okay. So Dame, you start. Moving a little bit further down the hall, looking around. It's a it's kind of an open space. Stairs going up. Looks to be going hallways out to different parts of the wings. And so that's what you're sort of getting this next is this. Now the rest of you, the three of you, are near the front still. You're the kind of reception area. The door is still open. You can still vaguely hear the sounds of the wind outside, but inside, none. But the three of you in the dark, now without your light source. Uh, you hear the sounds like it almost echoes, like there's dozens of them. It's like it's like <laughs> and then a few of you feel something just sort of like rub up against like something small just slap against you uh, a bit on the side uh, of like your legs or um a few like if you're near the reception desk like you can see the small shadow of something moving about like this little f f and it also begins to a little warm in here, like, huh, kind of warm. Whew, oh gosh, and you start, you start kind of just, oh, this is really hot. Uh, so Noel, Dr. Bad, Mullen, go ahead and give me a charisma say. What were you walking, Mullen? Hey, I will, I can see. Okay, I failed 19 over uh, seven. Noel, you not only you, you feel a warmth kind of overtake you, but you also like look down at your leg and you can see that there is a small glow uh, next to your foot. Uh, this um, kind of like red and greenish glow and you can just see it's just sort of rubbing up against and there's little flecks and stuff. You realize it's a, it's a decently large toad. Uh, with these little kind of speckles and flakes in it. And it is the most amazing thing you've ever seen. You're utterly enthralled uh, by it. It's just like, it is honestly the most, and there's others, but this one specifically is just fascinating. 
I'll pick him up. Well, aren't you a nice little friend? And you, you feel the warmth begin to go even further. And it's just, and like you're just staring at their eyes. The eyes are starting to swirl a bit. Your eyes are kind of there as well. And the rest of you see him holding this, this toad. It's, ba- it's basically about the size of his hand. And that's when I would say, Dr. Baden Mullen, you realize there's like a dozen more of these around. And some of them are like hopping against you. And there's a group of them around you. They're all giving off a very slight glow. So they're actually giving you some light at this point. Uh, but Noel seems to be have made a new friend. I'll use him as a light source and continue on. Okay. Uh, and so you will say you catch up at this point and you're just continuing to sort of stare like as you're wandering towards where, where, where Dame went and you're just staring at it, staring at it, staring back at you. It's just like love at first sight as the two of you are just, just enamored with one another. Uh, um, what, what do you have there? That's my new mate. Reckon I hang him in my hair tree. I, oh, oh, oh okay. Um, he, can I take a look? You insist. So you go to, you say that out loud, but then your arm doesn't actually listen to you. And so your arm doesn't actually extend over towards Dame. And you're just still sort of staring at it. And the whole time, Dame, when he's talking to you, never once looks you in the eye. And so Dame's going to come up behind Noel and just like smack him upside the back of the head. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? And then she looks back around and sees she's getting eye contact yet. No. Mm. Meanwhile. Mullen is trying to have Dr. Bad help her collect these toads without touching them into like a sock that's like a stocking kind of thing. Okay. Do you pull off one of your stockings and put them in there? Yeah. Okay. I'll take off my jacket, my sleeveless <laughs> jacket. <laughs> <laughs> they just start falling out of the sleeves. <laughs> you pick them up. <laughs> Okay. So, so we just have like this leg length of toads stacked on top of each other. You you each have um so we'll say you each of you has a sack of missile toads. And uh and Noel, you have a singular missile toad. Okay. Now, Dame, you have been uh looking up ahead, you realize you are on sort of the bottom this is the sort of the main floor. Uh, there's sort of three routes from here. There's like an eastern wing, a western wing, and then there's kind of up the stairs. Uh, to the east, um, you can see that there is a sign frozen over, and there's an arrow uh, that says eastern wing, a study in gizmotic anthropology. Uh, and then to the western wing, you can see there is an arrow that says in uh, inkscapes on glass. Uh, and then uh, going up... Uh, you can see like there is like a note that says for those interested in the irony and iron exhibit, please see the second floor. Uh, Dame is going to look at those options and say like, hmm, West Wing. West Wing sounds like an interesting place. Let's go to the West Wing. Okay. Let's wing All it. right. So you all begin sort of your slow trek down. Uh, it's eerily quiet for most of the hallway uh, as, you're, as you're wandering down a bit. Um, you can see that there's an occasional like office, you can tell, for like a curator uh, or some sort of employee lounge, that kind of thing as you pass by, public bathrooms, uh, others of that, of that ilk. Um, but eventually, you find yourselves in front of this large set of double doors again frosted over but you can see not only are they uh partially open uh but they are partially broken like something has just like broke them in half um and you are going to the inkscapes one right inkscapes on glass is where you're headed and you can see that there's just this this like one one side of this these heavy lacquered wooden doors it's just kind of claw ripped, broken in half. The other one is barely hanging on its hinges. And so despite the fact that this normally would um, would have these beautiful, 
beautiful ornate doors. It certainly seems to be open. And you see nothing inside. As you look inside, again, you have no real major light. If you hold up your little light, if you hold up your small bag of toads, you can see maybe a, a few feet in. Uh, and you can see that hanging from the ceiling are these uh, these sheets, like panes of windows, basically. And each of them has this decorative like ink painting on it. And they're all translucent. Um, I would say all of you do hear from somewhere deep in the ga uh, gallery, you hear. <laughs> as if someone or something is eating. Dame is going to take the light and just go towards the sound. Keeping the okay. light ahead of her. Okay. You, you start moving in. Uh, and you're going towards the sound. Every now and then you kind of accidentally bang your head on one of these panes of glass and they kind of wave around a bit. They're, they're very easy to miss without any major light. Uh, and there you finally see, as you get very close, in the corner, uh, just blood and gore everywhere. And you can see that there are legs and arms uh, that have been ripped and torn asunder. And they're on the ground and bits and pieces and you can see that in the corner, flop down next to what you think once had been a beautiful house plant that's now been frosted over, is, well, something. Uh, it, it, it is a, a a giant ball of fur, like white fur. There's blood that seems to be coating around what you think might be a face. These big old red eyes. It's got giant hands. And it's just, and it looks up at you and it, as if it just took a bite out of like an apple, but it's not an apple. It seems to have been a museum worker and a bit of their, like the coat that serves as their uniform. It's just kind of hanging from their teeth and dangling and just roars in your direction and starts to stand up. Don't, oh, d uh, d uh, d uh, d uh, uh, anyone with a, anyone with a weapon? And she just, <laughs> like, has her, like, purse that she's swinging up. Okay, it was so bravely, else. while I circle around in the shadows, while it's focused on her, distracted even. Uh, all of you go ahead and roll dex test first. This dex save to see if you go yeah. before this thing goes or after, uh, as it is, uh, she walked right up to it, so she it might, it might be a little quicker than you guys. Uh, okay. Oh, Success. No. Pass. That's my best stat, but it's not happening. Okay. So oh let's gosh, just, you rolled a nineteen. Let's just yeah. remind everybody how this works. Um, if you so the way we run it, if you pass your deck save, you go before the creature. If you fail your deck save, you go after the creature. That's how we do it. Um, remember, there's no to hit roll. You just roll damage, mm -hmm. uh, but everyone basically on a turn like has to like kind of target the same creatures there's only one creature here that you can see so it's not an issue um and usually what we'll do is you all roll your your damage die whatever you're using um and what i do just because i i, I don't like only taking one of the die i say we take the highest roll plus one for each other person who is actually contributing is sort of what we're all doing uh all right so who who is going before the creature who who passed their deck save me okay uh dave did all right, so Dr. Bad, you've been moving around. You're not quite in the position just yet. She just didn't keep him distracted just long enough. But Dame, Mullen, Cray, the three of you are quick enough. Dame, you're right in front. Probably makes sense that you would go. But Mullen and Cray, maybe you've been slowly moving up behind her as well. Uh, what are the three of you doing as this creature that is starting to get taller and taller, this abominable snowman uh, starts to stand <laughs> up? and is dripping museum curator from their mouth. Uh, what would you like to do? So Dame is just going to go straight in um, because she has her little uh, bag of uh, bed bread. Okay. And so she's just going to kind of take just kind of a handful of this and because he's he's got like something that he's kind of got in his mouth. And so she's assuming that this these breadcrumbs are just going to stick to the wetness that's around him and, you know, kind of that little bit. Um, and so this will help make him sleepy. Okay. 
Roll. I mean, this is you're you're running at this giant maw of yeah. like a twelve foot tall, do, uh, abdom, dominable snowman who's in the process of getting up. Roll a deck save to see if you can get there. Like, like you're in danger <laughs> uh, as you try to reach your hand out towards its mouth uh, that is very very sharp fangs and teeth. Yeah, there 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 is a bit of throwing that's involved in in the in the process. So like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just you know, they're breadcrumbs, um, not croutons. Well, they're very stale. Breadcrumbs. Oh, I rolled a one under nine. <laughs> that is a critical success. <laughs> so you do, in fact, manage to, as it's getting up, just run up and just plant a bunch of breadcrumbs like on this <laughs> swollen lower lip <laughs> that's coated in blood. And you just plant a few there as it's getting up. It, it actually genuinely looks confused. Like, what the, what are you doing? Uh, no damage. So, but you reach your hand away and you kind of stumble back a bit. Uh, Cray and Mullen. Uh, what Go are ahead, the two Mullen. of you doing? Um, would you say that an abdominal snowman cannot swim? Cannot swim? Uh, I don't. I don't think. I don't think any of us have uh, the wherewithal to make that determination currently. Okay, because I get a plus six d six against any leaving thing that cannot swim. When it um, the thing's like 12, 13 feet tall. I don't. I don't know if it does swim, but it probably doesn't need to. It's probably tall enough just to sort of wade through most like rivers and things that it crosses. It could probably doggy paddle if it's yeah. got arms and legs like a person. Yeah. Okay. I'll, um, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a D3. We'll do half and half. We'll, we'll split okay. the difference. Ooh. Okay. I might not use that now. Um, I would like to I have a, a shucking knife and I would like to use it to, you said that there's these panes of glass that are there in. are yeah. i would like to try and just knock some of them down on top of him oh fantastic okay uh sure go ahead and uh, i think you can you can probably do that uh i'm still gonna have you roll a deck save just to see if you do it in a in like a way that doesn't kind of get you in trouble or doesn't hurt you in some fashion um, it doesn't, you don't accidentally drop a glass pane on your, your head or something like that. So, but you'll, it'll, it'll work. Or, uh, or so Dame's ahead. head. I don't know if Mullen really is thinking about either, to be fair. <laughs> fair, enough. fair enough. Sure. Oh, no. Next okay. fail. Um, you do start cutting them, and you, but you're doing it like just randomly at this point, as fast as you can. Cut, 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 and we just see like the glass begins to fall. You just hear shatter, shatter, shatter. Some of them shatter like over the top of the creature. Father Some of them... Oddness, won't you come and notice me? You see, <laughs> I am evil tonight, Father Oddness. <laughs> your chimney tonight so I can kill you. (laughs) (laughs) As you're singing and cutting the rope, one of them just swoops down and just like whacks you in the face. You go stumbling back into the darkness. There's shattered glass all over the floor uh, and there's some kind of over its hair and, you know, kind of here and there. So he's kind of coated in these shards of glass and these flakes of glass. Uh, Cray, it's still, uh, still you. No one's officially attacked him yet. Everyone's just sort of been doing other things. Uh, so, Cray, what are you up to? I grab Steven Seagal, Seagal and I look him right in those black squinty eyes and say, this is our moment. Are we Pelicans or Pelicans? I'm a seagull. I can't really Go see get him. <laughs> and I just throw him at the indomitable snowman and I pull out my poulterer's knife and I just run after trying to stab this guy. <laughs> All right. Roll your damage. Oh, God. Oh, goodness. Uh, this is a D6. I assume the indomitable snowmen are not uh, edible birds. They're not edible birds. I rolled a lolly, birds. though. Uh, so that's six. Max damage. Okay. All right. Uh, as you stab in, you realize that his fur is not without its thickness. Uh, but you do get through, and when you pull the, the knife back out, you can see you've you've definitely drawn blood, uh, no doubt. Okay, its turn is going to. My bird knows I could. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> it's gonna go next. Um, okay, so. 
Okay. Um, I think I'm going to continue with the with the mouth thing since Dame, you just put something on his mouth and it's very confused. And you just stab it. And so at this point, he just... <sighs> and he just does this like Tyrannosaurus Rex roar. And you just see like a blizzard erupt from his mouth. Um... Everybody, but we'll say Noel and Dr. Bad. Uh, you all are going to basically get hit by the blast. I'm going to assume that the two of you have not yet moved into position, so you've been fortunate in that regard. The rest of you, though, uh, are going to get caught by this uh, this blast. Steven oh, too. God. Uh, what's that? Steven as well. Uh, Steven as well. That's 10 points of damage. Uh, as you Holy crap. feel your body, I rolled Max, uh, as you feel your bodies uh, just become coated with this sort of icy fog. Now to remind everybody how damage works, uh, reduce from your HP first, uh, which again can comes back pretty quickly in between combats and scenes and such. And then once that uh, is, is done, you start reducing it from uh, your strength. Uh, and once you get down to zero strength, well, you're well, that's not good. Uh, so reduce it. So, Dame, I saw you like kind of doing that. I think everyone probably, like, I think the three of you probably. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Mullen only has five health points, but she does have one point of armor because she's turtle. Perfect. Uh, now, the three of you go ahead and roll a strength save now. And if you pass, you stay in the fight. If you fail, you, you fall down. Uh, what does equals do? Meets it, beats it. Uh, under or I equal. Under, under or equal. equal. Yeah. Under. Or I equal. got lucky then. I rolled a three, and I had three left on strength. Yeah. Uh, Steven Seagal is very much dead, though. <laughs> oh God! I killed Steven Seagal just like that. <laughs> he had two Sweet. HP and five strength. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he just shatters into tiny little pieces and falls. Uh, pretty much Mullen, as effective as the actual Steven Siegel, so it's pretty nice. Uh, okay. Mullen failed, so I imagine she was starting to get back up after she got knocked back, got knocked back again onto her turtle shell, and she kind of skidded back through a couple sheet panes of, of glass, mm -hmm. and, uh, now she's stuck on her back as a turtle. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's, that's a shame. <laughs> and, on like, and you have the, the sack of, like, Floating, uh, of like glowing yeah. toes. Yeah, so like she's because. just starting the slow. She's starting to get momentum rocking to try and roll over. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's turn over then to Noel and Dr. Bad, who are now like, Dr. Bad, you've been sneaking around the side to try to sneak mm -hmm. up on this thing. And by the time you get there, Mullen is now on her back. Uh, Steven Siegel has uh, fractured into a thousand tiny pieces. Uh, Dame and Cray, you're both up, right? You both passed your strengths, I think. Dame? Yes. Okay. I passed. Pass. Yes. All right. Uh, so they're still up, but they are coated now in this sort of frigid, like white, uh, like little specks of ice. Uh, so Dr. Bad and Noel, what do you two want to do? Well, I know what I want to do. I'll defer to Noel first. He seems to have wisdom behind those eyes. I'm still mesmerized by the toad. There's a bit of a ruckus going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fling out my pruning shears mm -hmm. in my other hand. Mm -hmm. And I'll still just wander in. Absolutely. Um, while looking at the dude. Okay. Uh, I, if you want to, yeah, like absolutely stab away. But what we'll do is we'll say that because you're not really, what, what's the normal damage on your shield on your um, D6. Okay. So we'll make it, we'll make you impaired basically. Uh, so you're going to deal D4 instead as you're just sort of like, kind of like randomly stabbing uh, as you're staring at the toad. Um, and then, Dr. Bad, what are you up to? Mm -hmm. All right, so with all these people attacking him and him you know, getting enraged and spitting the cobra, is he perhaps distracted? I think that's fair to say, yeah. Absolutely. Because what I want to do is come running from behind, do a running bulldog where I jump up, grab his face, and then ram it down with the momentum, emit all the glass amidst the floor, dragging his body through all those shards of sharpness and hopefully into the body of poor dead Steven Seagal so that his little poultry feathers might jab his eyes in a dying last act. Please roll a strength save. This is uh, a very large and strong creature. So let's roll a strength save to see if that all goes exactly according yeah. to plan. It does. And it does as you as it's it's it just finished its breath. 
it's sort of retreating. You can you can also see it's like. Is it kind of starts to yawn a little bit, and that's just enough opening as Noel is just stabbing it in like the thigh. Uh, okay, this mm. looks weird. Uh, it's just stabbed in the thigh a bit. In the thigh. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. And right here in the, in the thigh. Follow uh, through. Yeah. Right. Okay. And um, and Doctor Bad, Safe you take that more. opportunity. You take the opportunity to kind of do this like running leap, grab it, bring it down, drag it to the floor, and you come. It comes. It comes like scraping over top. And then when you when you step up from it and you look down, you think maybe at first you, you've killed it, but in fact it is. Quite, it, there's a very heavy breathing going on, but it's like, <sighs> and it kind of rolls over a little bit, and you can see it kind of reaches its arm just for anything. And we'll say that the closest thing <laughs> is Mullen, and starts to pull Mullen kind of into this little baby spoon position as it looks like it's going nighty night. What would you like to do? All I know is our dead friend Steven did nine points of damage to his face. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> Poultry it's in motion. It's still alive. You can tell it's still alive. Uh, and it is going to, it is, it's definitely falling asleep though, uh, as it's pulling Mullen into that baby spoon position. Uh, what do you all want to do? Uh, Dame is going to try to pull Mullen out okay. from I think you can do that. Spoon position. I think you do it. Yeah, I don't think that that alone is probably not enough to sort of wake it from this this magical slumber as you start to pull it away. Other things might, but that won't as you start to slowly pull Mullen out. Mm. And maybe somebody maybe it like reaches out and it grabs the bag Seems of like toes time instead. For a sleeper hold. <laughs> but it's already asleep. <laughs> I know, but I'll put it into a deeper sleep, deeper a sleep. permanent one. REM sleep. <laughs> okay. Nice. So do you do that? Do you like get it in a headlock and just try to uh, sort of finish the job? Okay. Exactly. Okay. And we'll say kind of on the back, wrap the legs around its belly, kind of dig the heels into the stomach so it forces the air out. Okay. And you see after uh, a minute or so, it just sort of shudders and then comes to a rest. Mullen is standing above it. Singing it a lullaby as Dr. Bad places it to sleep. I don't think you actually are. I'm sorry, Mullen. You uh, you failed your strength save. You are unconscious until someone treats you. Oh. oh is yeah. that true? Okay. Then yeah, you, 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 you failed your strength test, right? Didn't you? Am I wrong? Uh, no, I did. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah, you fail your strength. That's you. You are unconscious. That's why I was able to just drag you over into like the, the so sort of. So Mullen like... is also snoring. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's so, so she's snoring. she's singing herself a lullaby in her, her mind while her she sleeps. Her hands have retracted into her little turtle shell. That's why she's so easy to move. Uh, okay. Well, clearly, she needs to be warmed up. So <laughs> what we need to do is take one of these large shards of glass. Coat open the belly of this beast and shove her inside <laughs> and have its warmth bring her back. The critical day. I am old. a doctor. Not the a medical doctor, but nonetheless. I am technically, a doctor. technically, uh technically you can crawl and stuff, so I don't know if you're fully unconscious or anything, Mullen, but uh Dr. Pad, you slice open the belly of this creature from which all sorts of foulness uh, and parts of the museum curator start to fall. Uh, license plate from Louisiana, all that kind of stuff just start to tumble down to the ground and you just shove <laughs> Mullen inside. Now, technically it says until you are tended to, and I do believe this would probably count as being tended to as your warmth <laughs> comes back, etc. All right. So you all I have defeated. I am an amphibian. Mm. So you all have defeated this uh, odd, dominable snowman as you're in this uh, this sort of inkscape gallery that is just covered in gore as it looks like uh, not one, but maybe two museum curators, security guards, something probably were snacks for this creature. Uh, all sorts of glass shattered on the ground as well. Uh, Mullen is slowly coming back to life. Um, what do you all want to do? Ray is mourning Stephen. Uh, he's sitting on the ground, just holding the little penciled on uh, goatee, uh, that little shattered piece that's all that's left. Just 
trying not to cry. Yeah. He had a good life. I, Poor guy. I don't think he would have any egrets. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Get out. <laughs> Just get out. <laughs> Uh, so I think it's just a few minutes of rest that restores all HP. So Dame is just going to mm-hmm. kind of sit in the corner um, and she's just going to kind of practice some deep breathing and uh, try to get all of her uh, HP back. That's fine. Yeah. All of you can do that. That's what I was doing HP. all morning. Yeah. Okay. I think in the pro- – we're going to like try to make room to shove Mullen in and there was the curator that we're pulling out. Now, I know it's wrong, maybe even bad to dig through the dead, but – I am Dr. Bad, so I will loot the body to see if there's anything useful upon that curator. Okay. Uh, you find, like, you know, some keys and things like that. Um, let's see. Do we have anything good? Uh, you do find, like, a, uh, like, what's one of those things? Like a nightstick uh, as well, because it looks like it's just, a, it's a, it's a curator in a, mm-hmm. uh, in a security officer. So you do see, like, a nightstick. It's just a D6 club, basically. Uh, nothing more special than that. Um, and, uh, I will say you find kind of a, a broken, crunched up, uh, like hand lantern as well. Uh, doctor, if, if you wouldn't mind so much, I, uh, I seem to have left my, uh, little security stick at home. Would you, would you mind if I, uh, would you mind if I took that one? In fact, I insist. Appreciate it. Can't leave yourself unarmed if any geese come upon you. Well, y- yes, that that is that is true. But you but you see the the power of the breadcrumb. I do, in fact, understand it. I, I respect it even. That was uh, amazing. Work well together. Indeed. You really shouldn't be scared of geese. You just have to talk to them. <laughs> I, they start a little feisty, but th- they warm up to you fast. Don't tell me my business. Geese are my business. You can have all of the rest of the birds. I know geese. Geese are a form of poultry, so I've dealt with them quite a bit. And Dame just has this like stick that she's just sort of like tapping on her other hand as she's having this conversation. Like, "Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there is only Mm -hmm. one bird that I've ever truly feared. The well, last time I took a bath, it mugged me. It was a robber ducky. God damn it. I fucking knew it was guy. I saw it when you said. Uh, um, God damn it. Okay. That's concerning. You should see when you've done what I've done for as long as I've done it. I have eyes in the back of my head. No robber you really? you duckies. Turn around? going to steal anything from me. Do you really have eyes in the back of your head? Wouldn't you like to know? That's why I asked. And she's like leaning against a wall and she's not budging. Interesting. Wouldn't you like to know? Is uh, is Noel still be weird about the frog? Yeah. Have you guys seen my mitt? You've given him a name Uh, yet? Toad. (laughs) (laughs) Dennis Hopper. (laughs) Oh, Dennis. Yes. It's good. Uh, Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what you mean by being, that's pretty judgmental, Um, but it's fine. Is he still enamored with the toad in his hand? I don't know. Noel, roll roll a, a charisma save. A three under seven. Yeah, when you turn, like when you when you when Mullen asks, like you turn and you say something, and you realize for the first time you've actually broken eye contact with this thing, and you feel something like kind of wet in your hand uh, as you do so. What's with the stare? Um, you're just you've been staring at that frog for a long time. I'll look back. It it really is a frog or a toad. Oh, I mean, it it still is, but you can see that it's like shifting and moving. It's no longer looking at you. And you see it leap off your hand 
uh, into the darkness and you can see on your hand it's left some sort of like colorful rainbow slick almost like oil uh residue on your on your hand mm. barely knew him what do you got there Does it smell of anything? Take a sniff. No. It's, it's slimy. Odorless. It smells. It smells. It doesn't smell bad. I would say it doesn't smell bad. Um. Odorless is probably fair, uh, but it's got this like kind of beautiful coloring to it. Like you look at it, it's just got like these rainbow colors kind of swirling around. It's only a couple drops worth, but it's right there in your hand. Let's wipe it on a rag. Okay. Hey, my tree. tree. There you go. Done. You hang it up on your tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anything cool that we can take in this room? Uh, so there's lots of uh, shards of glass. Um, but as you look around, there is something fairly interesting that you do notice, uh, Mullen. Um, you notice that there are crumbs on the ground lots of them and you realize in a different corner of the room almost sort of behind this small little barricade um, of like a, a broken chair are these crumbled and broken pieces of gingerbread Not the gingerbread army. I must. And Mullen's gonna rush over there to see if any of of them are still alive. No, not any of them. They're all in pieces, a dozen or more, maybe. They're all broken up. They're missing pieces, crumbled. Like there's not a side. There's not anything bigger than like a dime. This is this is horrible news. And Mullen will take like the little bit of time of her rest period to like make like a. A, a little pyre to send them mm. off on a a respectable okay. farewell. Mm. Okay. Well, then what are you doing? You do not know the plights of the gingerbread people. They have rights. They are they are worthy fighters. Their army fantastic. Is Steven's okay. body still mostly frozen? Steven's body shattered into mm -hmm. a bunch of different pieces. Okay. Good. I have good. his goatee. <laughs> <laughs> you just take a little bit of the blood to make it sticky and you put Steven's <laughs> goatee on your own face. I was going to try and gather up some of it to <laughs> make something for Cray. Oh, you can, you can gather up pieces pieces of steven seagal yeah take some yeah. Of the take some of the bloody rags off of the security officer and the curator and wrap it around all the ice and the glass and the chunks of steven kind of let sure. all the blood and ice and whatnot freeze together making this really crude like you know spiky mace thing of his dead friend absolutely you know steven would want to protect you he lives on with you with this Bloody heap of disgusting laceration. <laughs> um, while you're doing this, uh, we'll say one of you. Um, we'll say uh, we'll say it's Mullen. You hear sounds uh, out in the out in the hall, um, and remember that the doors have been ripped asunder, and you can see the light as well. And as you look down the hall, maybe about 50 feet, like we're almost like they're right by the stairs going up to the second level. You can see like this little bubble of light. And there you see a small group of Odmus elves dressed in their blue finery. Uh, one of them has this tall peppermint staff, even bigger than very similar to what you uh, actually uh, actually carry as well, Mullen. Uh, and you can see others are carrying what looks like some kind of metal tubes looking around they're investigating it seems like and you can't hear from where you're at even though it's very quiet you can't quite hear what they're saying but they're talking to one another very clearly 
uh, and they they're definitely investigating noises. Um, and so, yeah, you see that down the hallways. Um, Mullen will then, uh, because Cray and Dr. Bad have encountered them with her before, um, she's going to quickly get their attention, uh, and then point in that direction so that they can also notice that we're being encroached upon by, um, some of these elves. And, uh, Mullen will suggest that we, um, sneak up and, and dispatch them. Perhaps and even we cut a see We have the, we have all these glass panes that are hanging. Let us partially, like, if, you know, if maybe they've got multiple points of hanging, you cut one, let it be dangling, and have it set up to where, like, we can throw something to make the other one fall. Have a sound source that will come down, make them go towards that, and then ambush them. Ooh, so is Only there Steven like was a here? He could cut that so easily. True. I know he could. He still can. Throw true. Thank you for this. I, I think this is why he was bulking up towards the end. He he wanted to be yes. a better weapon after he died. Um, is there a good place where we could like take cover as we set up this ambush, Jeff? In this room? I mean it's very, very dark in here, and there's little corners. Like it's a it's a weird it's a it's a gallery wing, but you can tell that the displays are hanging from the ceiling, so it's not like there's like pedestals or anything to hide behind, but they're flanking around the outside. There's some seats and stuff here and there, so you can be able to hide I mean, around that kind of you thing. You should just totally do the Princess Mononoke thing where you use the body of the indomitable snowman <laughs> and just kind of like scurry up on him. <laughs> she was already inside it. <laughs> yeah. That is true. Maybe. We'll see when it comes to my turn. If you guys want to vulture on it, that's fine. I don't think one person could do it. It was like a 12 I think, foot yeah, tall. Yeah, I think it'll yeah. need to be a couple of us. Like <laughs> I'll take a leg. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Dame is like, no, no, there, there's it's plenty dark in here. We have a trap. It's brilliant. Everyone's idea for the trap is, is brilliant, I, I think. I would prefer to stay out of the corpse. Thank you. Thank you much. But Ray already has one leg I'm inside afraid. the guts when she says no. <laughs> he just slowly steps back out. <laughs> okay. So you guys want to set up You this, know what? If you want, what, but how are you going to throw Steven if you're inside of him? Oh, I could be an arm. No, we're, we're not. Yeah, we're not. We're not <laughs> getting inside. This adventure. Set up the ambush. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Second room. Hour and seventy minutes in. Uh, okay. You set up an ambush. You see these little elves, uh, and they're all. They're again. They're not very big. They're maybe three, four feet tall. Each one of them. Um, they have like they're like some. They have weapons and things like that. And they're looking. And as they're 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 actually doing like proper sweeps. You see one of them will go up, and they'll kind of listen to like one of the doors like the curator office or the bathroom and then it'll lean back and then one of them will just do like this, this sort of breach kick and then they'll go in shotguns up these pine cone shotguns and then they come out and one by one systematically. So it gives you time to sh set up this, uh, this little ambush. And eventually you can see they slowly start coming up towards this, massive double door half of which has been ripped off and the other one is kind of hanging ajar and they hold up like this uh what looks like some sort of uh, some sort of lantern uh, on a hook and they kind of hold it off into the into the room itself and then they slowly begin to sneak you know to sort of step in and they kind of flank out they're they're all extremely professional you see two of them come in flank out go immediately to like corners and doors and you see a couple more kind of coming in at this point. Shotguns raised. One of them has their peppermint staff raised as well. And that's when someone yells now or whatever. And the, uh, is it Cray who's throwing the knife? Uh, I believe so. I'm throwing, throwing the you, remains of Steven Seagal. <laughs> you're, you're throwing yes. the shard remains of Steven Seagal up. And it cuts through the second part of the, the hanging ink, uh, inkscape. And it comes careening down. Uh, and I'm going to roll deck saves for two of them, uh, to see if they manage to get out of the way of this thing before it crashes. Uh, all right. So I don't have a D 20 for some reason. So let me roll them over here. 
Okay. <laughs> we don't do a lot Whoopsie of D20s. Daisy. I don't. <laughs> okay. Well, one of them, uh, one of them fails with an 18. The other will pass with a 10. Uh, and so this is what's going to happen. They, as this thing goes careening down, uh, the two that flanked off to the sides get out of the way, but the two, including the one carrying a staff and the other, that seems to be like a bodyguard step in the glass comes down and you see the one carrying the staff is not fast enough and just gets literally pancaked right there on the ground before the glass shatters. <laughs> the glass explodes <laughs> and rips through the other one standing next to it. It doesn't kill it outright, but I'll say it still does. Cray, roll six point, roll a D6. Uh, we'll say that's how much damage it'll do to the one that did pass uh, as it doesn't actually die. But we'll say you kill the mage like right out. Wow. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great plan. It's a great plan. Uh, what did you D6 say to roll? roll? A D6? A D6, yeah. For the shards just sort uh, of exploding and cutting through it. I, I swear to God, I rolled max damage again. No, oh. I believe you. It's all good. I've yet okay. to fail a roll. Uh, as, yeah, yet Steven Sickles did. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, he failed that one. Yeah. 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 Uh, we we appreciate you plumping up, Steve. Okay. All right. It is not looking good. You can see it's got maybe four or five shards of glass cutting through of it. One of it's like in the mouth coming out the other side of the mouth. One is just directly Simpson style in its eye, just sort of poking out here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming out in pain. The rest of you, I imagine, are ready to go. Uh, so we'll say that was Cray's action. Got that ready to go. The rest of you... And since there are three targets, there's one that's now coated in glass, and there's two on either side of the room coming in with uh, these pinecone shotguns. So remember, if you decide to target the same one, both of, like whoever it is, it's targeting one. You all roll your damage together. We take the highest die, uh, the highest uh, the highest die roll, and then we we sort of add bonuses to that. So um, so we'll say, does anyone want to target the one that just got impaled with glass? Yeah, Dame wants to kind of take the stick that she's got and just kind okay. of like push the glass further in. Okay, fantastic. Uh, is anyone then targeting, we'll say, the one on the left that came in, the shotgun wheeler on the left? I'll gladly take the left-handed path. Okay, anybody else? Uh, Mullen will take one on right. Okay. Uh, okay, anybody? So so then, Noel, which one are you wanted to target? And if this or something else you wanted to do? I'll just target the one Mullen is. Okay. So Mullen, no, uh, roll whatever damage die according to whatever weapon it is you're using. Dr. Bad, uh, do the same. And Dame, you're doing the one for the center. Uh, as you guys spring, and this is sort of the sort of, uh, let's roll the dice and then we'll sort of describe exactly what happens here. Since we're being sneaky, I always have to ask, is the, are they fairly distracted or caught unaware? Uh, I would say for this round, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Next. What would we say a shucking thing is? Just a knife? Uh, what do you have? Um, per my... I have a shucking knife. Uh, yeah, you can make that. A yeah, you can make that. Um, what are you making? Your turtle dove? Turtle dove, yeah. Uh, you've a got regular it. knife is a D6. It's a D6. It's a D6. Okay, perfect. Yep. Cool. Okay. And All I right. accidentally... I had clicked on Mullen, so the six that's in there is actually mine. Sure it is. Okay, so Dane, describe <laughs> how you come in and finish off this goblin in the center. Describe what it looks like so as you, go, you all explain. As her, she's her sort of shuffling up from kind of the dark corner that she was in, um, she looks for the biggest bit of glass. And so imagining it's sort of like kind of maybe abdomen maybe is, is where kind of the biggest shard of glass is. Sure. And so that's where she takes the stick that she was kind of just given. And she's been kind of walking up, you know, kind of like hitting it against her hand, hitting it against her hand. And then she just kind of like thwacks it and just like shoves it through the body of the self. And it's just like, ah! and it's usually a comment. Ah! Ah! And as the, the blood kind of pours out, this sort of bluish blood pours out flops over onto the side uh okay so uh noel and mullen the two of you started targeting one uh i see a six by mullen and a three, a three by noel okay so nor so rules is written we would just take the higher die but i don't like that so we're gonna add we're gonna take the higher die plus one for noel's extra uh, extra attack so seven points of damage 
which is exactly the amount of health this thing has. So how did the two of you team up and take this other one out? I give him a prod with my pruning shears. Yes, as he stabs high, Mullen goes low. Mullen, she shanks at his ankles with her with her shooking knife, dislocates ACL, incata- incapacitates him. <laughs> he's dead. He doesn't. He's, he's trying to shoot. He's turning around. His head is getting sheared. He's ah, ah, as you snip off the top part of his ear. Uh, Noel, and as he tries to turn to shoot in you, suddenly he feels like his leg getting hacked away at, and he looks down, and there's Mullen stabbing away, and he goes to shoot there, and then a second shear, oh, gets him right in the neck, and he collapses to the ground. Uh, and then Dr. Bat, how did you do? I rolled a whopping two on my D12. Aww. <laughs> Dear. So describe how this doesn't go quite the way you planned. Uh, how, how's well, it, how did, like, what did you plan and what, what kind of goes wrong in the process? I think sadly, Steven was much plumper than expected and shards of him. It did shatter <laughs> further. And I, I crunch upon just a tiny bit of him just as they get close. And so I was thinking I was going to come in and get him and pull him down, but he hears me at the last second. So the best I could do is grab the stock of his gun and push it into his face to kind of bust his nose a little bit, but I can't get a good solid blow upon him to finish him. And so as he like stumbles back, the two of you are kind of like holding on almost like kind of t- a tug of war over this shotgun. He does this sort of like backwards, like matrix cartwheel to just change the angle of the gun so that even though you're still holding it, it's actually aiming right at you. And while he's up feet overhead in the air, he just pulls the trigger he's like, Die! and he pulls the trigger and he's going to fire his uh, shotgun and you get just sort of jammed right into uh, like the chest with your pine cone. Oh, um, all right. So this is going to be. Okay. This is going to be 2d4. 2 plus 3. So five points of damage uh, as you just feel these ridiculously icy shards of, uh, of, of pine cone just explode into your chest. All right. So just a reminder, something does happen if you hit zero exactly with exactly, your you get a scar going below. Yeah. Doesn't happen very often. Yeah. It always makes me kind of sad. Um, okay. Uh, so that is it. This, uh, this, there's one left. You guys have very quickly handled them. And the only one left, Dr. Bad, seems to be surprisingly having a little bit of a struggle, a bit of time. And as the shotgun goes off, all of you turn, you look, and you can see Dr. Bad and this small little odd Miss Elf are still in a fight. Uh, so how does this, how does, what, what happens next? Uh, um, Dame's just going to come over and just say like, oh, oh, this, this, this can't be, this can't be. And so she's just going to like thwack him upside the back of the head. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, who else is, who else is attacking? Uh, Mullen would, would grab the gun from the one that we disarmed. Sure. Yeah. You grab the one on the ground. Up. Put it to this poor guy's forehead and. So it is a, uh, let me double check, make sure it's not a blast. Is it a blast weapon? Uh, It is a blast weapon. So. I will not attack. I'll stay back. (laughs) I think Mullen would know that because of the last time she encountered. So then maybe she wouldn't do that. Okay. I mean, you might be able to just like conk it and like, you know, hit it with the, with the shotgun if you want. Yeah. She'll just stab it with her knife. Okay. Uh, What about Noelle, Dr. Bad? I'm going to hang a little elf shoe on my tree. <laughs> you just start to <laughs> untie the elf shoe and just start hanging it on your tree. Are you taking the shoe from the still living elf? No, the one we just <laughs> killed. When he, when he just killed. Oh, my God. Okay. Fantastic. I, mean, Claire, I don't know what else to do. As we're struggling to you know, pull the gun between us, can't ever, I can't seem to find purchase. I failed terribly. So in the midst of it, as he's being clubbed in the back of the head and possibly stabbed, I'll just lean my head forward and bite his nose off. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dr. Bad, roll a D4. Mullen, Dame, both roll D6s. Cray, did you decide? I've heard both ways. If she's not shooting, then I, I will go up and stab with my poulterer's knife. Okay. Dame rolled a one. That's a shame. Uh, looks Mullen, like did Mullen you roll a six again? six again? I did it again. Ashley only wow. rolled a six. I rolled a six I'm... again, too. <laughs> 
Look at that. Wow. Why are there two mullins, Sean? Uh, oh, wait, no, you're that's, that's six minutes ago. OK, so between all of you, you come up, Dame, you whack it in the back of the head and it just kind of lets go of the shotgun a bit. Dr. Bad, you snap forward and you bite it and you hear. Ah! Ah! And then Mullen, you whack it with a shotgun and then Cray, you come in with the final kind of shank it in the side. And this thing just kind of explodes Diablo style and flutters to the ground in this big array of blue. And that is the last of them. Take their guns, take their shoes. Yeah, what did this bodyguard one have? I know uh, the caster one had another, like, uh, staff. Uh, okay, so there are, uh, it looks like there are two shotguns. There's a peppermint staff. Um, I'm going to say the peppermint staff probably got destroyed in the trap, unfortunately. Uh, right. So two shotguns. Uh, and then the... Um, the bodyguard one that Dame beat up has a like a large staff themselves. It looks a little different. It looks more like a sort of like a monk type of staff. Um, I will let you know that whoever wants it, this is an elfy stick. Uh, it is bulky. Uh, it uh, deals two d four damage plus one charisma damage each time you hit with it. Mm. Oh, and it's a uh, like melee. Just a staff, like a it's like a like a monk staff, so to speak. Does someone want my peppermint staff? Because I have one from the previous, and then I would like the elfie stick. Oh um, yes, here, take take the take the elfie stick. I don't really need any of those weapons. Uh, I've got my knife, and I've still got my mistletoe. Suppose I should arm myself in some way. You've got two, shot, there's two shotguns. There's two shotguns here. Each of them has a handful of pine cones. So that's like basically a number of charges. So each of them basically can fire seven shots, essentially. So there's two shotguns, each with seven shots. Perfect. I will do wheeled shotguns. Okay. Fantastic. Go for it. Or, or just one. Killing from afar is so impersonal. You should be up close and you should own what you're doing. I strongly agree with the sentiment. Okay. So uh, what do you guys do next? Jeff, I have a question. I don't really know much about uh, Bastion City or the setting or anything like that. And I know less about Odmus as well. Because it's definitely um, not called Bastion City. So you've, you've certainly demonstrated Yeah, I, I don't remember what you said <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just Bastion. Bastion. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So I source my fancy birds from the Henquisition. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, a collection of mock fowl that hunt trial and sentence real birds for their perceived crimes. Um, the question I have is, do they drop ship? Do they drop ship? Could I call up and get another bird? So you don't know what a mock fowl is. Uh, so mockeries uh, in this game are Muppets. Uh, so a mock fowl would be a Even basically like a Muppet or a puppet. Um, and that's that's that might even have been what Steven was. Uh, no, was no, mine is a mouth foul. So I, I get the prisoners. Okay. They sentence real birds and I get I get those. So you are you are going to try to contact the Henquisition. Sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah. I you would imagine that the, the banks best... killing turkey. <laughs> like just that stuff. <laughs> like the really goofy looking. <laughs> it's just gonna be like WKRP in Cincinnati where they just drop it just air drop. <laughs> <laughs> God is calling in an airstrike. God, is my to fly. God, it's so funny. Um, you would imagine supply the best place, engaged. the best place to see such a supply drop would be on the the roof of this building. There, Cray. Oh, that's where you wanted us to go, anyways. Uh, yeah, let's go to the roof. I mean, honestly, you guys really don't <laughs> do what I want. So, <laughs> so. Here's what we, we do. Have, we salvage the we bones the of this large creature. We use them like ice picks to climb up the exterior. And we just climb up to the roof. There's we, a that way we right over there. That way we towards the finale. As if we, some ex existential force was telling us to hurry this up. <laughs> There's stairs. And we have the keys from the first guy. We just go up the stairs. I do like the ice pick idea. Mullen a, just has the lamp. But just tell me okay. where we're going. The upstairs, night is upstairs. 
the air, the the ice picks outside. Uh, any 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 bird could just come in and peck us to death on the way. Just the stairs. There's there's roof overhead. God damn! I, like I hate such your a logic. divide between us, Dame. And Dame is going upstairs. I follow. Okay. I stomp on each step. <laughs> They must be careful. Grave is going to put geese in her room when she's sleeping. You get to the you get to the second floor landing, and you see uh, extending out in like this uh, this this exhibit is the irony and iron, and you can see there's all sorts of these um, kind of abstract sculptures uh, of of made from iron, and it sort of looks like. Is, uh, they're 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 fairly small. They're kind of propped up on this this large table. It almost looks like this extended, um, like city miniature of Bastion City uh, on this large table. And there's all these tiny <laughs> little abstract iron miniatures uh, of the various buildings and skyscrapers within the city. And you can just see irony and iron is there, kind of frosted over. Um, in addition, I forgot. I need to roll to see if there's anything here. You do notice that there is movement uh, within that city. Uh, and each of the buildings, like no building is probably more than maybe two feet tall. And it's on top of this massive, like enormous banquet table. And it just looks like, again, a, a city in iron. Uh, and like there's little bits of movement in there. Uh, they would want to find this building on the model and see what's happening. Okay. Um, you get close, you move up, and you're looking for any signs of like this large square building that the archives was known as. And as you take a step, you kind of hear a flake of snow uh, or, or ice kind of crack underneath you. And then a voice sounds out from, uh, from the actual miniature display. And you hear, not one more fucking move or I'm going to blow your fucking head off. Um, oh, okay. And Dame is very good at red light, green light. And so she just freezes very much exactly where she was and you see, looks you, around with her eyes without moving her head to find the voice. And you see coming up like from behind one of these buildings, a head just emerges this round, doughy, flat head with these frosted eyes and a frosted mouth and frosted eyebrows that make it look angry as there's a gingerbread man that is holding what looks to be like a small hand cannon directly at you. And then you start to see more of them begin to start popping up behind all these other little buildings, each one of them with hand cannons. What do you do, Dame? Uh, Dame is... going to ignore them and swing at the one right in front of her with her stick. Okay, uh, roll Remember. a deck save. Oh. Nope. She said it. She said it. As uh, she does a, it, though, Mullen's yeah. yelling. Sure, sure, sure. No. Uh, roll a deck save. <laughs> see, if you, the, see if you can act before uh, this one. Seven under nine. Yes, so you do get your attack off. So roll oh, right. your attack, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, so it's, it's, my, oh, I got another six on my D6. <laughs> Describe how you kill the one right in front of you. <laughs> so she has kind of been walking around with it kind of like in her right hand. And so kind of as she like, you know, kind of stopped, she kind of had that arm up. And so she just like, very, very quickly, just to sort of like whips her hand to the side and just tries to kind of like decapitate it with kind of this like sideways swing. And as you swing, you clip the head. The head goes flying across the room into like and sliding into a corner as the body sinks. And then about eight other hand cannons of the the peppermint variety come firing out in your direction. Uh, I'm just going to treat these like basically as a swarm. Uh, and you're going to take, no, not that much, three points of damage. As the rest of you here, like, <laughs> you see these tiny little bits of smoke appear. 
Go ahead, Dame. I have exactly three HP. <gasps> oh, you get a scar. Oh my gosh, we almost do. never get to do that. Uh, all right, I know. so. So there's a special scars <laughs> for this one. They're not good <laughs> scars. Some of them are great, but you don't get one. Uh, as the way this works is you were at three health, you lost three, and so you take three, like the three on the chart. And so the chart is hobbled. Uh, so you are reduced to a limp <laughs> until fixed. Some of them are good, some of them are not. As you get <laughs> shot up, you try to dive for cover, but in doing so, you like your one of your legs just get rips up with the small sound of this small fire and these little tiny piercings. The rest of you just like you smell like this pepperminty gunpowder and you see the powder just erupt from the middle of that like iron miniature city uh, as just like almost like revolutionary war gunfire, like muskets start going off uh, as Dame hits to, you know, hits to the ground and you hear so many shake hell, Jerry, as they all like start coming to the edge of the table, you see them start emerging from behind the different uh, buildings, the rest of you. So uh, the rest of you haven't act yet. What do you do? Was Jerry the one that I carried around in my pocket? I mean, was he? I I would think with such an intimate relationship, Ashley, that you would remember the name of whoever it was that you carried around. This in, is a in meal of questions. Hold on. Go to everyone else. I got to rewatch that part of the video. <laughs> okay. Uh, Noelle, <laughs> what are you up to? You've got an anger the crumpets. I'm trying to get out of this line of fire. Just like jumping okay. and diving out of the way. Yeah, there's there's all sorts of these little pedestals and stuff here and there that are displaying random pieces of art and stuff. You can very easily hide behind one of them. No problem. Uh, Dr. Bad. I'm terribly sorry about what's happened to your friend. I truly am. You can clearly see that this fine young woman has been compelled to horrible acts by Father Admas, as so many others have. You've seen the carnage that has happened to yours. I've seen other gingerbread men torn asunder downstairs. It fills me with shame. It fills me with anger. It fills me with a desire to see Father Admas dead. Do you not feel that same burning desire with your own hearts does not bake you into an insensitive callous desire to murder that fat bastard now we could waste our time blaming each other or we could unite and we could find that son of a bitch and bring him down there is certainly a pause as they don't seem to leap off the side of the table to chase after dame as they kind of now start to turn in your direction at this this impassioned plea uh cray what do you do before i resolve all that it's all happening well, this is awkward no oh. Oh. oh that is the worst one yet dear god <laughs> i uh, shoot my missile yeah. <laughs> Okay, at the table or at yourself for that horrible putt? I've got more than one charge. Uh, we'll start with the table. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, sure, roll your damage. Sorry, Dr. Bad, that was a great speech. <laughs> so you're you're there, they're kind of turning and looking at you. This guy knows Father Admus. Yeah, we want to kill Four Father blast. Admus too. What's that? Four blast. Uh, Four blast. All right, you big ugly oh my god what is that hit the deck and as everyone goes like floppy the guy you hear like a little as the uh, as the miniature display erupts you see shards of metal going left and right how much damage four blast four four blast yeah <laughs> You see legs fly up, arms fly up. When the <laughs> smoke settles down, it's basically like a World War One reenactment. You see, guy, you see, like there's there's gingerbread down there with their legs, like ah, 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 ah <laughs> screaming out. Others are kind of holding and cradling and stuff. Ah, uh, as there's, uh, you having four is not enough to kill any of them. But it's enough to take them all down to one hit point, uh, as they are in a significant amount of pain. Uh, Mullen, what do you do? I, I blow the smoke from my mistletoe. And say, <laughs> fire in the toe. Did no though. Uh, I think that's enough to actually kill them. That's enough to just take <laughs> them over. Uh, Noel <laughs> is is taking cover behind a uh, a podium or a pedestal. <laughs> uh, Mullen, what are you up to? Um. 
<laughs> Mullen <laughs> lets out the most unholy screech. And uh, she runs towards this table to where all of these poor gingerbread have have been seriously injured. And she's crying as she's scooping them up, saying, I'm sorry, I will put you out of your misery. And then she's eating <laughs> all of them. Oh, God. <laughs> mercy <laughs> eating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. I don't think that's mercy. <laughs> They're like, oh, this is worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> As Mullen opens her mouth to chew more, you hear Spore screaming. Yeah. As you, as you start, she's crying the whole time. As you start to put the last one in your mouth, missing legs. It's got no legs. Half its head, it's missing. It's got its arms kind of folded on its chest. <sighs> Do one thing for me. Do one thing for me. What? Tell me. As it, like you kind of lean close and you put like it's in your mouth and you can see their heads kind of looking up to you. Die in hell, you bitch. And they let they move their hand past and you see they have a peppermint explosive right on their chest that erupts in your mouth. Ah. <laughs> and Mullen. <laughs> peppermint it's bursts it's in your mouth, not your hand. Peppermint, Jesus peppermint Christ. flavor explodes in your mouth. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> on a D8. It's awesome. Okay. Oh, wow. How does that, uh, obviously, it takes you down. It goes into my strength, yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll strength save to see if this, if you, if you endure the oh. explosion of flavor in your mouth. She does. Do you do? Oh, oh, it's just like, and it's not the good peppermint. It's like you've been to the dentist and they're mm. rinsing it out with fluoride mm -hmm. type of pens. So you, and that you're going to have that flavor in your mouth for the rest of your life, Mullen. For the rest this of your is life. my penance, and and then when she's done, <laughs> she looks at Dame and Cray with the most disgust you've ever seen from Mullen. Like <laughs> if there could be like the infographic of like Mullen will remember this, that was it. <laughs> Dame, what did I what did I do wrong? That they were did going to the mistletoe and I points at her. An entire <laughs> entire funeral pyre for the other poor gingerbread people who died it was fairly obvious oh no, i was it, resting i didn't see that you did a you did a you did a funeral up there yes they assisted us last odd miss when dealing with the horrible incursion and then and then you they were quite noble oh. people i can't believe that you would do that dame that is just awful awful and you cray Oh, I didn't do it. She took my she took my mistletoe. I watched you. Okay, maybe I had to do it a little bit, but only a little. And like they were bunched up and it it it's an explosive. So like can you blame me? I watched you. Mullen remembers. The turtle people remember. This will be written in our history books for the rest of time. Your lineage has been cursed. I didn't know she had that kind of sway. She can, she can write the history books. You know, Cray, I wow. like you, but I have to say, if it comes between you and a turtle curse, I'm sorry. I've got to side with Mullen. Please don't take it personally. No, no, I, I've never been turtle cursed before. This is kind of scary for me, too. Yeah. We are slow, but eventually we will catch you. <laughs> You'd have to spend the rest of my life on the move. Okay, okay, okay. so what 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 do we do now then? I apologies for my um impetuous um action there. What 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 next then, Mullen? She like stands and like wipes out her tears. She spits gingerbread at Dame's feet. And then she's going to stand. And uh, is there anything worthwhile in this room that uh, aside from this beautiful village? I mean, not anymore, uh, as there's been some explosions and things uh, that have kind of taken it out. But there's plenty of like uh, art and stuff on the wall that you could potentially grab and take with you if that's your priority right now. But um, in terms of like items of value that 
would be useful right now. No, no, no. That's all. Like Are there any, maybe display. you need the gingerbread men that had those little explosives on them that didn't go off just yet? I think she swallowed all of them. Yeah. Because she swallowed it's all gonna be a little Because it was an eight on eight. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that digestion's not going to go well for you. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Talk see. about heartburn. I think I will give one of the shotguns over to Mullen. Okay. Oh, no. I'm I'm loaded. But thank you. Oh, okay then. All right. So what's next? To the roof. Uh, okay. Mullen snags as much art as we can get so we can meet our quota. Sure. Where did you go? Cut it out of the frame, right. wrap it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Stuffs you, it in her shell. You stuff whatever you can and you start climbing up the next and final flight of stairs. All right. Each one of these flights. I'm going to make sure to eat a few bites of gingerbread as well. <laughs> this okay. is the body of gingerbread taken into myself so such that when I take vengeance, you will be a part of me and the vengeance will also be yours. <laughs> such is the will I'm of it. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's what you do. Uh, you get to the top floor and you can see a few things. Uh, you first notice that the uh, that the gallery exhibit, the display, Life Beyond Felt. Uh, and you can see that there are all around you these various interactive displays, uh, almost like almost like a natural history museum, right? Like you've got these little dioramas and such, uh, but there's almost like animatronics that are sort of shifting and moving around. And you can see there's all sorts of mockeries uh, that are uh, that are displayed. And it seems to be like a an exhibit that's trying to uh, chronicle the troubles and setbacks and achievements of of the mockery population uh, within within Bastion, except the entire display has been uh, is in shambles as a massive icicle has pierced through the roof and has plunged down. And you can see it is nearly like the, the, the extremely sharp point of it is nearly hitting the floor of this uh, this third level. Uh, you can see like little bits of snow and ice are kind of falling down uh, as you can actually through some cracks in the in the rooftop above. You can see this uh, the sky uh, above you. Uh, in addition to that, uh, in the room, you notice on and one of the displays, uh, one of these like little nooks with these weird displays, you can see that there is a massive blob that's just. <laughs> and when you look at it it's this sort of pale pasty batter with various like little specks of green and red but also a leg and an arm and what looks like a bust of a statue uh, looks like the underside of a mockery animatronic as there's this massive Oddmus fruitcake ooze that a few of you have seen before, but it like kind of bypassed you and you ignored it. And it is off in the way and it doesn't seem to be immediately interested in you uh, as it seems to be devouring basically anything it can. And it's becoming more and more loaded up with various ingredients. Uh, and that is what you see. And Dame just looks to Mullen. <laughs> like Dame is not going to uh, go in and do anything that has not been Mullen approved. The only people we were allied with were the gingerbread men. We can bake the fruitcake batter. Oh, okay. Uh, we could we could fall back on the ice pick plan. On this ice. What is that plan? We used the bones that we gathered from earlier. Crawl ourselves up. And then jump down? We're crawling to the roof. We'll have to punch through the ceiling, but... I mean, there's, there's a sliver that we could squeeze through. Chance. I see. I like We're sneaking thing. and trying to not get its attention. 
But if yes. we had malt of cocktail, we could burn it, bake it, and then it no longer can eat. If only we had that. And so Mullen is, is looking at your purse pointedly. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what do you have in here? And like, at, so she like waits a moment and then she just decides to like look. Can I roll something to see if I have anything flammable in my I just want to point out this was a flavor bag that you had thrown together. <laughs> this wasn't like an actual item. It's like any useful item I could possibly ever imagine. <laughs> no, oh. <laughs> I did not realize. I, I love that Ashley latched bag. onto it though. <laughs> Dame got. <laughs> The, the breadcrumbs. That was what she got. Oh, for I wasn't sure if you were like That's a it. day drinker she or got something. To put one of the hardest <laughs> monsters to sleep on the, after the first round. Like you're not carrying a bag with like fair, fair. Pay to win Molotov cocktails. <laughs> fair, fair. Okay, so we're climbing up the bicycle. I'll start knocking in some of those bones and help us climb. Sure. Yeah. Um, you guys have the bones, so I would say, yeah, you're able. You're probably able to do it if you all. Um, let's see, everyone, just rip a dex as you start climbing up to avoid maybe falling once or twice. All of you will eventually get up there one way or the other. But let's see if anyone uh, kind of struggles and see if that might uh, alert fruitcake men. Are twenties crit fail? Twenties are <laughs> yeah. in fact a crit fail, and is about as. <laughs> bad. We'll as remember you forever, Noel. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I failed. I did not crit fail. So, um, we might try to save you, Craig. <laughs> you guys start climbing up. Uh, Noel, you get all the way up. Uh, and you're about to reach up and get on top of the roof itself when you fall. Uh, you kind of lose your grip. You smash into Mullen, who starts to fall. You, who smashes into Cray, who starts to fall. Dr. Bad, you're able to reach out and grab Mullen. Dame, you could reach out and grab Cray if you would like, or you can choose not to. I will reach out and grab Cray. And you grab Cray, but no one grabs Noel. As Noel, you go crunching down uh, onto one of these displays below. Uh, and this mockery next to you of a small bear just starts to starts making noise and the fruitcake batter in the display just a handful of feet from you starts going and starts slowly it moves very slow it starts moving over in your direction the rest of you you're kind of clinging onto each other and scrambling up but you can see that noel who has fallen and uh you probably i would say you can go ahead and just reduce your h your hp to zero um but you're not okay. like knocked out or anything um mm. as you were kind of shaking it off this stupid bear mockery is mocking you and this giant ooze is coming in your direction what do you do noel I was just crawling myself away, just pulling myself away okay. from the mocking bear. And the rest of you, as you're looking down, you can see Noel is crawling away, and this mockery animatronic is sort of following him. <laughs> and then but following that even more slowly is the giant fruit kikus. What do you want to do to help? I'm going to okay. drop him one of the shotguns. Don't give them the satisfaction, Noel. You know what to do. <laughs> oh, <boy>. Happy Armas. <laughs> what are you thinking, Miss Dr. Bad? I'm fine. I'm just crawling away. <laughs> He's crawling actually faster than those. It's extremely slow. <laughs> I mean, there's several shots in there. There's like seven shots. But if you get six <laughs> shots in and it's still coming, you know what to do. <laughs> Oh hey, hey, hey. We're all in this together. Together. And I fire my missile toe at it. Oh! Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shotgun mm -hmm. falls. Mm -hmm. At Noel. Mm -hmm. Not at the... <laughs> no, uh, all right, roll your damage uh, for your uh, for your missile toe. Uh, that's a whopping two damage. Okay. And uh, 
as it explodes, there's a tiny bit of like the the actual ooze that basically gets cooked by it. And so it's no longer that kind of doughy pasty and it just sort of cooks. And then a little crumble falls to the ground. Um, Noel, you, you fall and this, this thing's getting closer and closer and maybe you kind of hold your hand up. And as you do, the rest of you that are looking down, scrambling up, you can see the hand where that residue from that missile toad, uh, was still there. There's still a little bit of flakes. And suddenly, that giant ooze just sort of stops. <laughs> you see it undulate a bit, but it no longer makes any forward progress. Oh, look at that. Hurry, climb up. We got to go. Clearly, the shotgun was for the animatronic. I was not suggesting you kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, right. I would never suggest such a thing. I'll take a couple of pop shots into the bear. <laughs> and the bear just erupts. <laughs> <laughs> clatters to the ground in pieces. <laughs> you rip through it. No problem. Um, It'll try to catch up to them. Okay. And I'll say at this Game point. will extend the stick thing down so that he can kind sure. of climb up. And you all can get up there just fine. But when you're like halfway up, you can tell that the the ooze begins to move again. But it, it doesn't seem to be necessarily capable of climbing up the icicle. When you all make it to the rooftop, it is a uh, it is a flat and slick, icy ground. Like it's completely smooth. Looks like a skating rink up here almost. Uh, and you can see that the icicle is extended probably about five to ten feet up in the air. And above it, you can see there's this swirling s- portal uh, that seems to be corresponding to the light that has been emanating out. All around on the on the actual rooftop, there's, is again, flat ice, but occasional chunks of snow here and there. And roll a luck test, Cray. Uh, so it's basically just like roll a deep, you know, I think, I think that it might even be built into the sheet. Yeah, roll a luck test. So a luck button underneath your charisma. It's in the sheet. Uh, okay. Is that okay. good or bad? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's good. Um, as you can you 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 suddenly hear <laughs> like this like propeller balloon craft come flying past, and you all see as you look up there is this kind of oblong balloon. Underneath it, there looks to be like a like a VW bus style of vehicle, uh, like a craft underneath it. And there is this propeller that sticks out from it and it's going through the ice. And the back, the back door, like this cargo door opens up and you all see this big old crate just get thrown out and just and it kind of explodes and breaks right there in front of you. And uh Steven, what kind of animal? This is this is the hookbill duck that I ordered. Okay. Duck Norris. You see it gets up and it stretches. Well, hey, how you doing? I have been just so lonely. These people just don't know how to talk and communicate the way that you do. Uh huh. Will you be my friend? <laughs> uh, we'll just see how things go. Okay, I'm gonna start calling you Squawker Admus Ranger. Okay. Can you do like a roundhouse kick or anything? Yeah. Can I see it? No. That's fair. You save it for the. Save it for the bad guys. We're going to go kill uh, Santa. Who's Santa? I'm sorry. Father Admus. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's go. Uh, <laughs> do you want me to hold you or? No, no, no. I'm good. Okay. Last, uh, uh, just real quick. I'm sorry. Uh, last bird there, you held, is a... uh, I heard, didn't end well. He was flying, to be fair. Uh, uh-huh. And... He, he, he was a beautiful bird. Um, see, there is fine. just a little bit of bureaucracy. As a fancy poulter, I have to make sure that you're not a counterfeit duck. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know that giant scale from Monty Python where they like weighed the goose and the witch? I've actually been carrying one of those. I've got a poultry scale. 
Uh-huh. Uh, so I pull that off my back and I set it up. Uh, could you just get on that side? And uh, Mullen, could you get on the other side? Yeah, all right. Mullen's done this before. <laughs> You've gotten on a scale before. This. Yeah. <laughs> Climbs on the side of the scale. Absolutely. Uh, which one's heavier? Uh, Mullen is. Yeah. All right, I think he's a fake, but it's okay. He's, he seems like a cool duck. <laughs> I am a human-sized turtle. Yeah, but ducks ducks are like compact, you know, they're they're all muscle. You know, they're known to not have an ounce of fat on them. Ah, uh, and Millen just nods and like gets off. <laughs> all right, Duck Norris, we're good. Let's go. Duck Duck Norris is currently like wrapping a headband around their head. Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> Tying it behind. All right. So you guys see that atop this icicle is this uh, this portal that you've a few of you have seen before. Some of these creatures have come out of raiding Bastion for various things and then retreating back inside. Um, the presumption being that this goes back to the realm of Father Odmus. Okay. So we take brief rest, regroup, make a plan. Then we climb up into Father Odmus' realm, dispatch him. I thought we wanted to kill him with Father Odmus. I thought we were here to prepare our deaths. I mean, that is secondary for me and Dr. Bad. Just... Just know, Father Odmus has also been cursed by the turtles, and I have come the closest of all of us to getting vengeance for our line. What is the I thought you once upon a time I could be satisfied with a life within the ring, but now I know that they, all those years of building those little toy trains, building my hands to have the strength to strangle the life from his throat. How many more centuries of indentured servitude must we allow? Will, will we allow him to force upon others? What is the real debt that we hold? A debt to some group of crushers? What is more crushing than the horrible idea that some fat bastard from another domain would use this jolly excuse of a holiday to make you think you owe him your joy? You owe him your so wonderful day thank you for leaving all these toys for me that were made with blood and sweat from just these poor little bastards like those gingerbread men really and dave like just sort of stands dad, up and she's just like <laughs> waving the stick in the air she's like all right let's go i am inspired let us go um if it makes you more excited stuff from santa's realm sells very nice oh that's why i'm here that's why i'm here for Father sure. Odmus? Oh, excuse me, Father Odmus. Well, let, I've let's never go. made that mistake Father. in my life. Let, let, let us dispatch with the talking and let's go to the portal. I mean, we are resting first. And then Mullen just kind of flops on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys can, you guys in all of this, getting the, the yeah, new bird or, and everything, you can, you can rest. That's fine. HP's back up. HP back. Yeah, that's fine. How she does the Mullen get up when she's on her back in the shell? <laughs> she just kind of looks at Dr. Bad. And then he <laughs> takes pity on her, I presume. He does like a skateboard thing where he just comes up to one side, just steps yeah, down. Yeah, and he just, <laughs> yeah. She kind of spins a little bit, lands on her feet. There's clearly a thing where it's like, I'm a man and you're a turtle. It could never be, but Mullen, you are the love of my life. No I one got- else have ever held the same amount of rage against that son of a bitch as I have. <laughs> I thought we were married already. <laughs> oh shit, I am wearing a ring. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Seagal was the officiant. Yeah, after after last Odmus, I locked it in. Uh, 
I've taken a lot of it, it, it was probably like I took like four tombstones last week. The concussions, they start to pile up. I'm I really know. sorry. I forgot we were already married. It's exciting every time. It is. Every time I find out we're married, I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's go murder that motherfucker. Fucking finally. Yeah. <laughs> and like, we don't even do anything romantic. We chest bump. <laughs> high five. That's what Melissa and I do all the time. <laughs> uh, all right, so Dr. Pat and Mullen uh, just like race <laughs> into the portal like they're college football players coming out of a tunnel uh, and they just rush inside. What are the, about the rest of you? Do you just let them go? Dave goes running after. <laughs> this is All exciting. Right. Goes charging in. Noel, Cray, do you guys go charging in as well? Dust myself off. Hop on through. <laughs> okay. You ready, Duck Norris? Yeah, okay. Let's do Let's this. Let's do this. Jinx. You owe me a Coke. No, I said jinx. No, I said jinx. Did you say jinx? Are you I, coming? Said jinx. I said jinx. Oh, what? we gotta go. Okay. Are you coming? <laughs> you just hear it somehow echo across the planes of existence through a portal, <laughs> yes. a dimensional portal. <laughs> yes. The anger of Dame is that strong at Chris. <laughs> All right. When you guys uh, go through the portal, there is very much like a stargate, like you're just kind of like swooping through this. Uh, but instead of it, you know, instead of it being like this, like empty blue light, it's like this flashing, like red and green. You can feel this coldness kind of wash over you. This distant sounds of like jingling bells. And eventually you find yourselves plopped down into the middle of, uh, of what appears to be an icy but extraordinarily colorful forest. You look around and you can see that the trees here are these tall, very tall pine trees. Each one of them seems to be coated or, or at least strung up in these kind of glowing bulbs um, that all just almost like almost like it's fruit hanging from them in some way. And it's all sorts of different colors, reds and greens, orange and yellows and blues and whites every which way, illuminating this beautiful sheet of ice. And you can see that you are, there's like a path near you all. And it seems to be kind of swir- like, you know, kind of s- s- swerving a little bit between some of this forest moving up this hill. And when you, your eyes kind of follow up, you can see at the very top of that hill is this very, very large, like, very beautiful and idyllic log cabin. You can see there's a bit of smoke kind of curling up out of the out of the chimney a bit, um, and you can see that there's definitely light on in the in the windows and such. Uh, and that's which that's where you guys are at. What a marvelous just- place. I, right? And Dame just sort of looks to Mullen. This seems like such a wonderful place here. Do not let appearances fool you. Okay. Okay. I, I trust I trust you. Um, but it's so nice. But slap li- yourself away. in the face. It's the only way to keep yourself sane. Keep your rage up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> keep your rage up. It's very much a werewolf thing. Yeah. Do we have to slap ourselves or can we slap someone else? Then Dave just turns around and smacks <laughs> Gray on the back of the head. Ah! <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, you want me to hit her back? Yeah, kind of. Chuck, <laughs> Duck Norris comes walking over to her. Eugene. <laughs> Sorry about this. And then, whoop, oh, like right there in the <laughs> shin as hard as he can. You just, oh, God. <laughs> I feel like he hit the one that's already hobbled. <laughs> exactly. That's what it did. It's even worse now. It was starting to feel better. That's just way worse. <laughs> Noel, I don't want you to feel left out. I do have my old jacket full of frogs. I'm going to just swing it at you. <laughs> what are we doing to each other? We're getting ourselves psyched up. We're not letting Father Admus get in our heads. 
Uh, Jeff doesn't need to kill us. We got it covered. I know. This is great. <laughs> All right, everybody, let us go quietly, stealthily. Okay. Start moving quietly up the hill. There's a very light breeze. It's not, it doesn't feel that cold. Like if it feels nice, like you can definitely see snow and icicles and such like that, but it doesn't feel like you're in this oppressive cold. And whenever the wind seems to go through the pine needles and such, you feel this beautiful song, almost like the sounds of a bell ringing here and there. And as you climb to the top of the hill and you see, you see the, the enormity of this beautiful cabin you see that there is a man uh, sitting right there out in front of you um and a kind of a large uh what looks like a like on top of the, the patio or at least a, a deck right out in front uh of the of the cabin itself um he is rotund uh he has got these rosy red cheeks this um this big old uh this big old like white beard and um, I'll say not on the porch itself. You can see he's probably sitting kind of in this clearing out in front. And there's like a, maybe a fire going here or there. And you can kind of see him across the fire. And uh, he's dressed in like red and white. And he's got these, you know, black boots extended. And he's like, ho, 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 ho. Oh, come on up here out of the fire. Oh, I just made some new cocoa. And you see like these two hands just kind of. Sipping this big old mug. <laughs> Come oh, on, Miss Children. I, I excitedly run towards them, ringing a bell. <laughs> uh, and he come up, and and you can see he like the arm reaches out and kind of grabs what looks like a a mug and kind of hands it over to. Oh, well, here you go, Noel. <laughs> You've been a nice boy, <laughs> and hands it over to you. I gladly accept it and show my beautiful tree I've been decorating. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that looks very interesting. You've done well. Ho, 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 ho. And I'll just beckon the others to come. Okay. I've got my mistletoe launcher aimed right at him. Mullen, just give me the word. My name is Mullen. You killed my grandma. Prepare to die. <laughs> you can't kill me. <laughs> I'm Father Odmus. <laughs> and if I killed your mother, <laughs> it's cause the bitch probably deserved it. <laughs> Yeah, and Mullen will immediately <laughs> run at Father Oddmus to try and slash his throat. <laughs> Go charge again. What the rest are you doing? Uh, I would like to proceed her charge with the firing of the mistletoe. That sounds great. Uh, Dame and Dr. Pat. Uh, Dame is thoroughly confused because no oh, Noel is Jeff just is like walking up and presenting the tree and so like mm -hmm. Dame's just gonna sort of have out kind of the stick that she's kind of had out and she's just gonna kind of walk up next to Noel and just sort of have it out looking a little bit confused and meanwhile Dr. Bad sees the opportunity Noel has walked up Innocently begins to present his magical Christmas tree. Dr. Bad sees the opportunity. The fat bastard starts to laugh. He's going to run up, grab him while his mouth is open, and pull his good mouth open and engorge him upon that magical Christmas tree and try to choke him upon it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I've got a mistletoe from Cray. I've got Mullen charging with a knife, and I got Dr. Bad trying to. Basically, Timothy Dalton him from Hot Fuzz onto the onto the tree. Is that about right? Okay. Yep. Yes. You know it exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's God exactly damn. what I'm going this for. This really hurts. God yes. Damn, but I love that movie so much. Okay. Right? Yeah. It's so good. Okay. Uh, and then Dame, what were you doing? Uh, Dame will join in the second round. Okay. 
Uh, the three of you that are attacking, go ahead and roll your damage die uh, as you come charging in. Uh, yeah, that sounds great. I rolled a one. <gasps> oh my. She's a fickle oh. mistress, but when your luck turns... <laughs> I'm giving them all 12 inches of that Christmas tree. Okay. Shit. Dr. Bad comes running in. Mullins start hacking like you're slashing away at his at these big, thick legs. Cray's missile gets there first. <laughs> kind of explodes. You can see the, the cocoa goes flying away. Noel, you kind of turn and, and, and sort of to avoid the explosion. Dr. Bad, you take the opportunity to leap over the fire. You grab him by the head and you pull him down and, <laughs> and you stab him and impale his head. For a total of 14 points of damage. <laughs> and he's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> And then he stops moving. Oh, the odd miss. <laughs> oh, poor Noel. You look up you look over Noel and you can see your uh, what looks like your your pine needle, your 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 no, what was it? Juniper, June apple tree, June apple tree. You can see uh, like a branch of it kind of sticking out his cheek, his big rosy cheek. As he leans back, his eyes just kind of like going in different directions, staring vaguely up. His mouth kind of brown from all the cocoa he's been drinking, and a and a branch sticking out the side. This is the true meaning of Ordmus. The best decoration there is. <laughs> Santa's on your tree. <laughs> and then Mullins, Oddmus. <laughs> she's going to reach up and grab Father Oddmus's Santa hat. And then she's going to don her spoils of our kill. You reach up and you try to pull the Santa hat off. You realize it's stuck to its head. Like the whole head kind of jerks each time you go to pull it. There's then a rumble. The earth starts to rumble, it starts to quake and shake. You can see like the fire begins to kind of fall atop itself. The logs and the rocks, everything's kind of crumbling. You can see behind you like the log cabin just starts to collapse itself. Kind of, you see these fissures in the ground. And all of you watch as the body of Father Oddmus begins to lift up like this puppet, just something's lifting it up. And you watch as erupting up from the icy ground is this sort of blue skinned, massive giant. You can see arms that seem to extend out like 20, 30 feet in another direction as the hand pushes down and pushes itself up. Oh. And hanging from like the chin, you just see this limp kind of body of Father Oddmus just hanging there. I let really hurt. And he reaches back with his hands <laughs> and he stomps the ground in front of you. All of you make a deck save. Oh. As there is now about a 40 foot tall giant standing in front of you. Fishers in the ground yes. everywhere. I'm going to activate a little ability I have. Oh, Ooh. okay. The rooted way. So because I've focused so much on being a tree, I can focus my feet in place and I can't oh, yeah. be moved. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. That sounds great. Uh, and so you're able to sort of keep yourself sturdy as like the reverberations of the ground as the ground explodes. Uh, how did everybody else do? Um, Failed. I success. think that's a crit success. Uh, I was, crit I was success so close. You got a two. Uh, crit success sounds, is, uh, in this case isn't really good. All it does is mean that you're not going to take any damage basically okay. from this. Uh, so only one is Dame that failed. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Dame... Um, sorry, let me scroll down here. Uh, okay. Um, so you are going to take, uh, so this is just for like the opening and then we'll actually get into an actual round. 
Uh, sure. Only one, just one points of damage. As now okay. standing in front of this collapsed house, giant hole in the ground from which the true body of Father Oddmas has emerged. And the small creature that you were talking to is merely just some sort of mole or growth on the chin of this creature that had just been laying in the ground and has now emerged. You all can go first. You Iron off down. another toe. You look back down the hill and you can see in the distance there is that portal still, just so everyone knows. Uh, okay, so Cray are firing... Um, you're firing one of your missile toes. Uh, Dame, yes. what are you doing? Uh, mm, gosh, I only have a melee weapon. Um, I guess Dame is going to uh, bravely run in and try to whack at this thing with their little like security stick. Okay, so you're going to start swinging away at one of the legs. Guy's like 40 feet tall. You're just hacking away. Like, I'm just yeah, like absolutely. hitting his pinky toe. <laughs> okay. Noel, what are you up to? I'm just going to scream up to him. I only wish for something to pay my debts off this Christmas. I'll miss. And I'll just hold my grip. Okay. Uh, Dr. Bad, what are you doing? The first thing we need to do is to cripple this son of a bitch. I'm going to shoot him in the eye with my shotgun. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Sounds good. And then Mullen, what are you doing? Um. Uh, that's a great question. You know, it was coming. You're the last person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, Cause Mullen would yell for everyone to run. And then she's going to attempt to climb this thing. Uh, how many peppermint bombs would you say that Mullen swallowed? There were a total of eight uh, people, uh, and you probably ate seven of them. One of them exploded, so there might be six more inside of you. Can, can I roll a luck test to see where they're at in my digestive tract? Uh, no, we'll say... Um, We'll say you do something and then we'll roll a luck test to see if they were where you <laughs> hope they were. Okay, fair. Um, <laughs> shit. Yeah, while she starts climbing up him, she's going to take out her staff to okay. try and entangle him and she's going to cast that. Like, are you climbing or are you taking out a staff? So then I will stay on the ground and uh, okay. cast that on his legs. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Uh, then all of you who are going to be doing damage, go ahead and roll your damage ability. Go ahead and roll your damage die right now. Whopping one from Dame, which is about appropriate. It's still good. It's still fine. Oh, okay. I just oh care about the entangling. Okay. I rolled uh, max damage, uh, six. Uh, it was my last toe and it was the big one. Oh, very nice. Okay. Uh, so it looks like a total of five points of damage. Uh, as you guys are firing pine cone shells, you're hacking, you're banging on the things, you realize his skin is like rock. It's like icy rock and like your tiny little chips and scratches in it. But he's just like, <laughs> you think you can harm Father Artemis? You have been naughty. And he looks towards Noel. You have been nice. Ho, 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 ho. Um, and he's going to go. Uh, it was five so, points of damage even with my six. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. With a six? Uh, six plus two is eight. Uh, so yeah, it's eight points of damage. I didn't realize you rolled a six. Where did it say you rolled a six? I, I've been rolling physical dice. I haven't rolled Oh, any. sorry, sorry, sorry. My is bad. that all right? Yeah, no, no, it's fine. I didn't even know you said six. Uh, okay. I don't know if you actually declared your damage. It looks like nine points of damage. Then. Okay. I did. Uh, I said six because it was the big one. There's a lot of things going on. A lot of things going on. You're so proud of it. <laughs> I was. Um, okay. So then I need <laughs> Dr. Bad. Uh, roll a luck test. Oh, Okay. Uh, 
I, I have no clue if that's good or bad. Uh, what was it? Four. Four. Oh, okay, you're all right. Uh, what is something nice that you have done this year? Something nice that I've done. Well, I've done plenty of terrible things for others, but I do love my practice of dentistry. And so all the orphans of Bastion that have eaten all the sweet and terrible food that are put upon them because it's processed and cheap, I pull all their cavities for free. Mm. Mostly because I love to hear them squeal in pain as it happens, but by doing so, I prevent the infections and the other problems that come with it. But I, I have I've pulled out a great many cavity, cavity tooth from the orphans of Bastion. So he sees shouting down at all of you about being naughty and nice. Dr. Bad, this memory, this like moment kind of comes into your mind. Like, like, no, 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 no. Like, I haven't been naughty. I'm Dr. Bad is not naughty. That, how, how could you possibly think Dr. Bad naughty is, naughty is the name that they gave me, you son of a bitch. Give yourself five temporary hit points. Mm. Then... It's not his only turn. He's got something else he's going to be doing. And he's just like, Dash your dancer, Prince of Vixen, to me! As he calls out, and you guys see the uh, the various uh, colorful trees begin to shake. And you see flying out from them four massive Odmus reindeer that are not as big as him, but they're like Canadian moose size as they come flying down and skidding into the snow. Uh, and they are now entered into the fight. All right. Your guy's turn. Oh, what would you gosh. like to do? Oh, Dame will try to 1v1 one of these reindeer. <laughs> okay, go right ahead. Uh, so do you want Dancer, Prancer, uh, what did I say, Dasher or Vixen? Uh, Dasher sounds like a pain in the ass that runs away all the time. Okay, go for it. Uh, what are you doing, Cray? Uh, I'll try to take a reindeer as well with my poulterer's knife. Uh, question, mm -hmm. reindeer, can, reindeer can fly. Does that make them birds? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Are airplanes birds? Yes. They are? Uh, <laughs> fish that can fly. Are those birds? Flying fish are birds, yes. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then they are birds. Okay. And reindeer are edible, so I get an extra D6. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so who do you want to go to? Who do you want to target? Uh, she said Dasher. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll take Prancer. Okay. All right. Noel, what are you doing? You've been called nice. and I'm going to ride one of the reindeer. Okay. Uh, do you want to ride Dancer or Vixen? Let's do Vixen. Okay. So as you, as we see Noel run over to Vixen, Vixen just senses it and lowers their, lowers their neck and you're able to climb on top of Vixen. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Uh, Dr. Bad, what are you up to? We have this odd moment whereupon I am being judged to some extent. And I would hope that in its confusion, I'm like, do you see now? Do you see what has happened to the youth of this nation as you force your confections upon them, as you force your sugary sweetness onto their teeth, causing the rot and the decay within their mouths and in their very souls? Do you not feel some amount of regret? Do you not realize the falsitude, the frailty, the fraudulence of your entire existence? And just try to just blather at him Isn't to try and distract him. Isn't that in him. itself naughty, Santa? And just yeah, exactly. Cavities. It's trying to wants to blather at him to distract him, and at that point, <laughs> like crawl up and, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> maybe even crawl into his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> climb up Santa while you're blathering on. So you're climbing up, giving this mm -hmm. speech, and that's going to distract him. Okay. Uh, and Mullen, what are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, did I? So I did hit my thing with a peppermint staff. So would you say his feet are entangled? Uh, let's see. So this guy has forty feet tall. Okay. Uh, his each of his legs is the size, uh, is sort of the the width or diameter of a uh, of a of sort of a large pine tree. Uh, okay. I would say that normal entanglement from that would probably no. not work on him. Uh, on the okay. reindeer, most certainly. Uh, but mm, I, I don't know. Plus, I don't know if he if he's even really trying to move currently. Uh, Fair. Okay. Um, it, was there a reindeer that was not being dealt with? Yes. Uh, well, Dame uh, is attacking uh, Dasher. Uh, Cray is attacking Prancer. Dancer uh, is over there. Uh, and then Noel has climbed aboard Vixen because he's on my team. <laughs> so yeah, dancers open. A father Admus. But by, by chance, does Santa have any teeth that perhaps have feelings in them? He does drink a lot of cocoa. That has been established. Could be possible. Could be possible. We'll see so what I would you love to inside. catch him. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll try and entangle dancer. Okay, so you're going to shoot uh, over in the direction. Okay, so Mullen, go ahead and roll your damage. Dame, Cray, same thing. Both of you are attacking one. Uh, and, Noel, you've just climbed aboard, and you are now uh, mounting uh, Vixen. You're you're riding Vixen, a flying reindeer. You can do whatever you like. Uh, Dr. Bad, roll a, I'm going to say roll a deck save as you try to climb up uh, a, 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 a giant. Um, let's see okay. how this works for you. Oh, I will. With the two, you definitely, you are climbing up, you are giving uh, the speech, and we'll say that he, I I don't know if he's, I don't know that you get distraction. I just don't see how, like, you're giving the speech and climbing that you get the distraction benefit. It's all mega maniacal. Like, like he really just needs to say his piece. Okay. Well, you're you're using the distraction distraction terminology. I know how you work. You're using that, and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to like, oh, well, he's distracted, which means I could use this ability, and so I just want to... I don't see... I'm fine. I'm fine spending a turn just climbing. Okay. In fairness, I'm a good sport. I'll just climb for a turn. He's a 40-foot tall giant, so we'll say it it. takes a while. Yeah. I will blather for a while, and then maybe... (laughs) Okay. Maybe something will come of it. Right now, I'm climbing up towards that mouth. Okay. You're climbing up... (laughs) It's <laughs> blathering the whole way up. You're at like his waist and you're in your explain and you're speaking about the uh, whether or not he's truly the naughty one. OK, how did uh, how did you do uh, there? Mullen on your attack on Dancer. Uh, I did three damage. OK, very nice. Uh, Dame, how did you do on your attack on Dasher? Four. OK, very nice. Cray, how did you do on your attack on Prancer? I did eight, unless uh, reindeer are not birds, in which case I did five. They are birds. We've established that. Uh, Oh, mine is Blast. uh, Blast is AoE. Yes. Uh, Okay. Well, I mean, you can. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I'm just, I don't, if if it would hit them, I don't want it to also hit the reindeer then. uh, Affects all targets in the area, rolling separately for each. Um, so if you're kind of exploding this out, uh, I mean, you could certainly target like one that like if you're targeting just um, who you target, you're just targeting like dancer. If you're just targeting dancer, that's fine. Like you can do okay, that cool. without yeah, I'll just getting do just anybody dancer, in the explosion. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, Cray, describe how you uh, completely destroy uh, Prancer. So it's actually a combination of Cray and Duck Norris. Mm-hmm. Um, Cray runs and just does a flying leap, both hands on the knife, and gets uh, da- Prancer right between the shoulder blades and holds on. And right as uh, the reindeer turns around to uh, start nipping at me, Duck Norris is there to roundhouse kick with his little webbed <laughs> feet. And the, the <laughs> neck turned to nip at me and then immediately snaps back the other way. <laughs> Uh, you just hear a big kick. crack, just echoes, and then the body just goes limp. Duck Norris rolls off, but like it's perfect, just rolls off, and then gets up, ready to go. Okay, all right. So 
let's see what we got. We've got three living uh, living reindeer, two of which are going to attack back. Uh, so since Mullen, you've shot this uh, this staff in the direction of um, of Dancer, they're going to like basically stampede over in your direction and try to hoof and antlers you. Uh, so you're going to take six points With of damage. With entangling? Oh, that's actually fair. That's actually fair. Um, so, so basically, this they're going to sluggishly move across. Just, just to understand something, uh, put the word it's entangle. It's not snare. It's yeah. Well, there's no such thing as that. Like, it's just sort of a thing that we're, mm-hmm. we're I, I put on it as like a, as a way to just describe what it's doing. So basically, Fine. you've got all this tinsel wrapped up in its legs, and it's just trying to now <laughs> kind of charge in your direction. But I'll say it's unable to sort of charge you down completely. Uh, okay. Next up is Dame. Dasher's going to go after you. Five points of damage as they hoof an antler on top of you. Um, Prancer is dead. Vixen, uh, doesn't want to attack you, Noel. Um, it'll turn around and look at you and it'll say, where to, nice man? Let's fly around the rail. Okay. And we just see it as <laughs> Vixen leaps up into the sky and starts taking Noel away from this terrible place uh, as they start exploring uh, the realm of Odmus. Okay. Vixen, like the e. moment where they go in front of the moon. <laughs> you just see it. Just, <laughs> it's enough. And there's like the tree on the back too. Just kind of going with them. All right. All right. You have survived. All right, Noel's got somewhere. Maybe that's next year's. Is we figure out where the hell Noel is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, then uh, big giant Father Odmus is going to go. He is going to do. Uh, okay, he is going to do a stomp. Uh, this is a blast. Uh, so that means. Cray, take two points of damage. Uh, Dame, take six points of damage. Mullen, oh, take eight points of damage. That's Dr. That's Bad, I'm going to say the stomp doesn't hurt you because you're you've established you're climbing him, and so the stomp's not going to affect you. Okay. Uh, Dame, did you go under your HP? Roll your strength. Uh, that's That was all of my strength. Like, my strength went to zero. <laughs> so you just see this big foot come... <laughs> and you look around and you're like where'd dame go and the foot lifts back up and you can see like the little bits and pieces of dame are kind of stuck to the bottom of father Odmus as his foot comes down again this time next to mullen uh mullen how you looking uh mullen got depleted went into her strength failed her strength save and so, so it doesn't it doesn't kill you outright as long as you have some strength left right yeah so she has okay. four strength left and okay. as she gets knocked down, she just makes what she presumes to be like her final yell as mm-hmm. she just continues to confess her feelings to Dr. Bad. You were the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh, I'm going to get this so bitch for you, Mullen. <laughs> I won't waste this. I'm going to get you, you fat son of a bitch. So, we will come back around Ray to... is looking at Dame and mm-hmm. just thinking the irony that she was always looking up in fear and yet didn't see <laughs> the massive Santa boot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Dame is is a bug beneath the foot of Father Oddness. Noel has flown away on an adventure with Vixen, the reindeer. Cray, you're still up. Is that is that correct? You're still you're still yeah up? yeah. Uh, okay. I'm not doing great, but I'm not doing horrible either. Okay, and Mullen unfortunately is uh, is un is, is sort of knocked down. You can kind of crawl away or something like that, but um, yeah. that's that's basically it for you. So I'm gonna come around then. Cray and Doctor Bad, what do you guys do? This is it. More than likely it. All right, Doctor Norris, we have to cause a distraction. We have to we have to get. Father Odmus's focus somehow. Uh, you thinking what I'm thinking? No, I'm not thinking anything. Whatever you're thinking, let's do it. 
I w I actually wasn't thinking anything. I just said that because I was hoping that you were gonna say shit. What it was that we you don't wanted have any us ideas. to do? What are we supposed to do? Uh, just <laughs> stab him in the throat. No, no, he's forty feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just start trying to like give him a bad hangnail. <laughs> the two of you. I'm not trying to do damage. Just I just want to distract him. <laughs> you just start poking at his toenails. <laughs> okay. Hey, Dan, Duck Doris didn't have an idea either. Okay. He's a duck. <laughs> 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 okay, Dr. Bad, what are you doing? You are most of the way up uh, Father Odmus at this point. You can see Noel has fled. Dame is most certainly dead. Mullen is screaming up and she's on her, you know, she's, she's not dead, but in dire straits. What does Dr. Bad do? Well, my dearly beloved Flesh-colored mullen. We got this far. I won't give you anything less than my absolute most. I'm going to continue crawling until I can reach his nasal cavity. And I'll crawl up in it. Until the apex. And I will reach this candy can as far <laughs> up into his nasal cavity as I can. And now try to blast this son of a bitch's brains for Marlon! You fat fuck! <laughs> See Dr. Pad climb up the neck, grab onto the small, weird mole growth that was the other Father Odmus climbing up. And he's not even really paying attention to you at this point as he's looking to get off my toes, you fuckwit. And he kind of starts lifting his leg up and there's like Duck Norris and Craig kind of like stuck to it a little bit. And then he's about to bring it down. And that's when the echoing of Dr. Bad from within the nasal cavity of Father Odmus. And you fire the shotgun, roll your damage for the for the shotgun. Doesn't suck. Oh, I'm sure it's gonna be great. Okay, two D four. That's fine. Yeah. As long as you didn't roll two ones and you just hear <laughs> the eyes of Father Odmus just immediately go <laughs> in different directions. You see it like part of its head, part of this like bald head just suddenly cracks and goes in a different direction, and then it begins to fall. Uh, Cray, roll a dex save. Dr. Bad as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. I need a 13 rolling yeah. a one. That's oh, a one, not a seven. Either way, it's a pass. Yes. Damn it, Dr. Bad. <laughs> Holding on to like some nose hairs. <laughs> <laughs> so as the body comes falling and landing, um, a few more of the reindeer are like trying to charge in towards Cray, but right as they're about to leap on top of Cray and Duck Norris, the body of Father Odmus <laughs> flattens them. We see Dr. Bad roll out of the nasal cavity, landing with like the hero maneuver, like his fist to the ground and standing up. Mullen, Mullen, where are you? Wiping the blood from his face, all the viscera. Mullen! Mullen! I'm sorry, she she didn't make it. Oh, sorry, uh, that was Dane. Mullen's fine. <laughs> you see Mullen <laughs> off to the side. There's a little twitching, like, reindeer leg. You just leg. see her feet up in the air because she's on her shell again. <laughs> so... The last thing we see is Dr. Bad, like walking over, lifting his leg, doing the skateboard kick. Mullen comes popping up into his arms. <laughs> and we, we fade did. to the sound of Dr. Bad and Mullen exchanging. Just making out. Okay. <laughs> and that is the end of 
electric bastion land <laughs> it is super sloppy and nasty to end on it's so gross <laughs> it's like, just like the lats all folks think coming in <laughs> oh. <laughs> a grown man dressed like a doctor baking out with a flesh colored turtle you're the body of father obvious okay <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> Noel is exploring this beautiful icy land. And Dame, well, sorry, Dame. <laughs> it happens. All right. Oh, well. Noel has to play our happened? unholy child in the next, <laughs> next person. And we will see. And we will see exactly what happens next year uh, if we decide to do this again. But that is the end of us. Uh, that is the end of our, our little game. Uh, we are done. Uh, that was that was fun. That was weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. That was odd for sure. <laughs> What's that? That was odd. It was. <laughs> Mary, <laughs> it was the, guy the, did. the guy with the jokes. <laughs> Look at this guy over here. All right, let's get on we out have of here. Definitively proven that Chuck Norris is better than Steven Seagal. I think everyone kind of knew that already. But yeah, I okay, hear you. yeah. I hear you. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and do some closing plugs, and then we'll get on out of here. Uh, so, Jerry, tell us about this Patreon first. And read some Patreon comics, maps, tokens, fun stuff. Check it out. Perfect. Uh, tomorrow will be our next game. Uh, if you want to come back tomorrow, we're playing some Call of Cthulhu Eternal Lives. You can see a bunch of the folks on the screen right now uh, in that game. After that, Monday. Uh, oh, also tomorrow, I think we got a giveaway tomorrow. I think we're doing our, our Norse Foundry giveaway tomorrow. Uh, over on Call of Cthulhu. Uh, Monday, we'll be doing we'll be doing some Fried Empire. Because you Melissa, Jeremy, myself in that. Uh, Tuesday, Steven, what the hell's going on? We're playing Marvel Multiverse RPG. And uh, speaking of giveaways, we got a ton going on with Marvel. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now on our YouTube channel, uh, Lolly Gagger Co. No, that's the Twitch one. Adventures What's in Lolly YouTube? Gagging. Adventures, <laughs> Adventures in Lolly The easy one, yeah. I'm not mad at you uh, because you're saying our. <laughs> so I'm fine. Yay! Lolly gagging. Yeah. Uh, so go watch the previous episode. It's already up. And if you leave a comment, uh, you have a chance to win the core rule book on Demi Plane. And if you uh, show up to our session live on Tuesday, you have another chance to win the core rule book. Uh, so you got two chances to win there. Yeah. Got all sorts of fun little giveaways. It's holiday season. Uh, so come keep coming back. Keep hanging out. Keep checking out the different channels, etc. Uh, and what else we got next Thursday? I think we got werewolf and then we're probably taking the weekend off for, for holiday purposes. But, uh, but I think next Thursday we should still be good for werewolf. That's the plan. All right. We're going to go ahead and raid our buddies over at defenders. I know they were doing some walking dead. So let's go ahead and, uh, throw them uh, a little. Hello. Uh, have a great rest of your night. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, Mary Admus, uh, father Admus is a dick and, uh, <laughs> see happy holidays. Bye. Mary Admus.